Trying to keep it real instead of what you usually get from these talking heads. It's Grapsody, we're here to fill the void. Three black fans, different perspective, got to fill your voice. Coming with the podcast, talking majors, indies in between. Yeah, it's all that. And we're down with fight for better fallback. Coming for respect, we connect like a ball bat. No need to double check, these are all facts. You're listening to us talk raps. You're listening to us talk raps. Will Phil and Reg. Yeah, we're Graps a D here to talk raps. Yeah, we're Graps a D here to talk raps. Welcome. Dreadhead. The Dreadheads are back in the lobby, officially running around, banging on doors, causing trouble, causing commotion, eating your food, leaving dishes. That's right. This is Graps a D. I'm Phil Lindsay. Of course, joined by Righteous Reg. What's going on this morning? In the building, it's your boy, Media Man, your favorite rapper, your favorite writer, your favorite podcaster. It's my birthday weekend. Send money, send your bombs, send everything. I, uh, send, whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't send my guy bombs. No, send your moms. Oh, I thought you said bombs. I was about to say, <laughs> wait a minute. Whoa, hold on. No, I said send your moms. Send your moms. Uh, send uh, some love. Uh, just, you know, shout out your boy. No, Phil, I'm very excited to be here Saturday, um, Oakland, California, like it is, uh, my birthday is on Monday. So, you know, I'm in that mode, man. I'm just like celebrating myself. Uh, got a rap album thing coming out on Monday. I don't know. I haven't rapped in a long time. And I was like, what if I rapped? It's always a shower thought that does it Phil? It's like, what if I rapped? And then I got out the shower and I started rapping. So on Monday we'll hear something. Okay. Hey, man. Uh, of course, uh, early birthday salutes to you. Um, yeah. It's getting to that time, that time of your life where birthdays feel like weirder and weirder every year, isn't it? You know, um, I'm up here capping, acting like something, but it's really just like another day in the office at this point. It feels like, um, everybody's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, nothing really. Like, it's, I don't have like this big, thing going it's just like i'm gonna like probably hit the beach kick it eat some sushi like nothing crazy yeah um i had this moment the other day and i was like i know that i'm old now because the guy that invented pop tarts um the green ranger and the guy that invented dragon ball are all gone i'm officially old it's it's over (laughs) it's over for me man yeah you know phil this week has been kind of wild i'm not the i don't have no dragon ball z knowledge but like all the black people in my life that i know are into anime specifically because of dragon ball z so i know like how huge that has been to our community so please get into it for a bit uh yeah i think that for a lot of people um Dragon Ball was kind of their gateway into anime. I, again, am old. So um, when I think, like, the first anime I ever watched was probably either Speed Racer or um, mm-hmm. Andrew, uh, Android Kikata, which is fucking awesome. But mm-hmm. I digress. Uh, uh, Dragon Ball, man, it's had a huge, huge impact on so many, so many people, man. Um, had a huge impact on me as a person in so many ways. I mean... If you open my phone right now, it is a screenshot from Dragon Ball Z. Uh, it's that's that's my lock screen. If you open it, I can't show that because it has a message pulled up on it. Don't yeah, want anybody to see yeah, the message. Don't, do but, that. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to expose that message to the the viewing public. Um, but yeah, just so many things that from Dragon Ball. Like um, I when I first started trying to learn how to draw. I started trying to duplicate Akira Tozawa's work um, Mm -hmm. just from the way that he draws clothes and folds, the way he draws people, the way he draws vehicles. Um, One of the most influential creators of all time, not just manga artists, not just character designer, one of the most influential creators of all time. Um, Dragon Ball Z is known all over the world. It's not just like a a black community thing, Latin Mm -hmm. America, all over the world. It is everywhere. Um, there is no part of this of this fucking world that does not know Dragon Ball. Right. And so, man, I was I was messed up when I first saw it. I was like, nah, this isn't real. I thought this was just like a hoax at first. And 
that I sat and, and looked at other people talking about it, I was like, ah. Oh. Pretty unfortunate. Well, it, it's sad, man. It's sad to see, man. Um, that did, did I say Tozawa? I did not mean to say You did say so, Tozawa. Uh, Akira Toriyama. Sorry. It's people. wrestling. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm now... Our, our brains. Uh, it's 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 early on a Saturday. I'm I'm here to talk about wrestling, and you know two things are happening at once. Now, don't don't uh Stephen A. Smith me don't <laughs> don't don't have me out here saying Vegeta. Vegeta. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no nah, man, Akira, Akira Toriyama is extremely extremely inspirational, influential figure. Um, created one of the best fictional works of our time. Um. Also had a hand in video games like Chrono Trigger, mm. um, Dragon Quest. Um, mm. I just don't know who I would be if I did not discover Dragon Ball Z in so many words. There's, there's so many people that I've met throughout my life that I have friends with, that I'm friends with because of it. Um, it like, like I said, started me learning how to draw in a lot of ways. Um, just so many things. People that I knew in school that I traded tapes with. Like I did not trade tapes for wrestling. I traded DBZ tapes in school. Um, it's uh, man, it's it's hard. It's hard to just imagine like what my life would be like without Dragon Ball Z, man. So Akira Toriyama is a huge deal for me. It's, I, I was talking to uh, Vince from uh, Wrestle Rap last night, and I was saying it's kind of similar to when Stan Lee passed away, because mm -hmm. like Stan Lee was just such a big figure for me as a comic book fan, um, yeah. and it's just it's sad, man. It's just really sad. It hit me really, really hard the other night. This is a. Uh... It's funny that we're on a wrestling podcast because your story right here is exactly how wrestling is for me. So a lot of times when pro wrestlers from that generation pass away, it feels like that. Like when o the night that Owen Hart died, it was like, I didn't even know how to like process it. I was like the emotions and like I've been watching this guy on TV and he's connected to so much of my life. So I understand, honestly, because I have a cousin that's huge in the Dragon Ball Z and like I just know like the connection that so many people have to that and the stories and like that's going to stand the test of time it's forever at this point yeah yeah i yeah very disheartened by it like i said i if if you like go through any sketchbook i've owned for my entire life there's, there's dragon ball z characters in it if you go through any of my belongings there's tons of dragon ball stuff everywhere just like from just like memorabilia just like i i just was showing people this wristband i used to wear all the time when i was in college and had the red ribbon insignia on it um nah just huge huge impact on me as a person so i was i was all messed up doesn't night. <laughs> yeah. rest in peace rest in peace to akira toriyama um of course uh condolences to his friends and loved ones um i think the outpouring of love and respect that was shown to him that night is a big indication of what he meant to people not just the fans but other manga creators other creators wrestlers just people of all walks of life yeah that night i was like before i found out i was like why is every single clip on my timeline dragon ball z i mean every i could there wasn't one clip that i went past that wasn't dragon ball z i was like what's going on and then when i found out i was like oh but yeah it just showed that everybody it looked like basketball players wrestlers like everybody in any and part of the culture we're talking about that that night yeah uh, and there, there's so many other things that it influenced that i also love like big sonic the hedgehog fan sonic the hedgehog is influenced a lot of ways by dragon ball z um mm -hmm. if you don't see it it's all over it i mean from like super super sonic is absolutely like a riff off of super saiyan um right. i mean even just like like the aesthetic that he's drawing on and just everything it, it's it has so many uh influences on that on super mario i mean you could go on and on about how many things in pop culture were influenced by dragon ball again rest in peace hope everybody's uh doing well off of this it's been crazy man last week of virgil and all this it's just like every week we're dealing with some shit man can we get a break yeah uh yeah it's like I said, I'm a lot better about talking about it today, but I, yeah. I, was, I was staring at my phone for a minute like, what is this real? Like, <laughs> but then I'm also like, I was getting old, man. Like I, um, <laughs> uh, when I came on here and I talked about my grandmother passing away, I went for like a few weeks where I wasn't sleeping well and stuff. And when I was up, I was watching Dragon Ball Z. I was doing like this big rewatch. And so like, it's weird to think like a few months ago that getting through a grieving process, I was using Dragon Ball Z and here we are 
at this point to start the year and Akira Toriyama is gone. Right. Yeah. It's, wow. a, it's, it's like comfort at this point. And now yeah. trying to get comfort thinking about the comfort is like, <laughs> it's a crazy vortex. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, again, rest in peace to Akira Toriyama. Um, yeah. Hopefully we've got other lighter stuff to get into. Um, we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, I was annoyed because I was uh I was looking for this most deaf album on streaming the other day and I was just like where is it and which one uh, uh the the ecstatic I was like where is this mm. album why is it not on streaming and I had to like find other means to listen to it and I was just like what listen I pay for the streaming man give me it's the, not give on me the, give me the music uh, it's not it, it wasn't on most of the streaming I was looking for it, but. Maybe I have I was it just on having a, an old man uh, moment. I have it on an iPod somewhere, so I'll be listening to I, it. So I do I, too. I have an is, iPod, you guys. Who, yeah, we're we're grandpas over here. <laughs> yeah, I I have it on iPod somewhere, but I have no idea where my iPod actually is. Because who? When's the last time you actually used an iPod? I use it pretty often, honestly. Like pretty much really? every time I take a road trip, I like gra- I can see it right now on the table. Like that's how much I use it. That's how much of a grandpa I am, you guys. Turning you thirty eight years old, you guys. Thirty eight. You still got you still got the will on there. Or you got like a touch. Uh yeah no it's the wheel one, the classic big dog big brick that thing's gonna be brick forever I think brick phone. <laughs> <laughs> I love it man. When I want to go back to two thousand eight, beep beep beep, put it right back on. And that's what it, that most of that album Some, comes up. <laughs> sometimes you got to revisit that because that's where all of the mixtapes are and the, the mixtapes aren't on streaming. Like if I want to like go and listen to all the mixtapes I had at that time period, they're all on there. Uh, there's a lot of really dope Lloyd Banks mixtapes that I would listen to. That's where they are. That's where they exist. And it's crazy that that uh, they're like erasing the art and content from the world, like the dat piffs are getting lost and all these things are, are are going away. And it's so unfortunate. And like you just said, you're trying to find this most deaf album and you can't. You have to go by different means to do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I unlocked another memory thinking about Dragon Ball Z the other mm-hmm. night um, and just thinking about how often um, in the in the era of uh, 56K, I would yeah. like load up and like um print all of these dragon ball z images like on on paper and then um <laughs> then like try and draw them and stuff like i would go to the library and try and print them out off of geo city accounts oh i'm old guys God. sorry I'm bro so- we didn't talk about ipods <laughs> <laughs> i'm old <laughs> going to the library geo cities <laughs> Geo City's <laughs> accounts, buddy. I hope I hope that unlocked the memory for you guys. Because I was thinking, it's crazy out here. I was just thinking about that the other day. Like, yo, I really used to go and like print print out the joints. Like, we even printing out like the stuff for video games and like sitting in front of your front of your TV with like all of these sheets of paper. Like, <laughs> bro, <laughs> now, youngsters don't understand getting a game genie code. That like it's like <laughs> it's it's a different life over here that we could just like pull anything up ever phil had to go to a library pull up 56k internet and print it and that 56k internet was so slow take like it made all that all the noises <laughs> it made all the noises when it was when it was booting up you know <laughs> different times man try to be secretive and quiet and so your people don't hear it, it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> yeah. using up all this paper to just print up all of this all of this dragon ball stuff and like slide it into my my uh backpack like no nah, i'm doing work i'm doing school work <laughs> <laughs> what happened to all the ink <laughs> it's crazy man again rest in peace uh did you see that uh um mike epps was on the matt barnes and uh stephen jackson show talking about all kinds of wild shit. Pretty much that he was on cocaine. Everything that I love of Mike Epps, he was like, I was on cocaine that time. I'm like, yo, this is crazy outside. But he's talking to, talking about his beef with um, what's the homie's name? Um, Shannon Sharp. Uh, Shannon Sharp. How could I not remember the homie's name? He's all over everywhere. Uh, he was talking about his beef with Shannon Sharp and how I, it felt like he was like, I wanted to be a grown man about this, but I think he saw uh, Shannon Sharp in person and was like, we can't fight. Like, that guy's giant. <laughs> I did not see it, but I saw he got himself in some hot water with his wife because he's been 
he's been apologizing ever since he left this uh podcast and i was like what you going there and say man like he's been like yeah I, I i apologize to my wife you know i she means the world to me so he's put up like multiple posts apologizing to his wife now and i was like what you do over there bro like yeah i only heard about the shannon sharp stuff and the richard Pryor stuff i didn't hear nothing about his wife stuff i think i think it was a quote where he said something like um i i've learned as an adult that you have to treat women right and i've never really treated a woman right and i was like Yeesh. okay uh um, but I, I don't know if everything he said, I think that that's the quote he's talking about, but I've, I've just seen him apologizing profusely. So I was like, yeah, he, he, he was on sleep, sleeping on the couch or something. Cause see, <laughs> Sh <laughs> Shannon Sharp opened up the floodgates. Cause now these people are just going on and talking and giving it up. Cause he was on there, like giving it up. And like, that's what happens when you give it up. You start giving it up and you forget like, wait, what did I say in there? And you get home and your wife's like, what? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, he got home and she was just like, that's how you feel. That's Word? what we talking about. That's what we doing <laughs> on national TV. It's crazy outside, man. This is a uh, um, and Cat Williams. You saw you saw Cat Williams run his forty. I did, man. Yeah, I was trying to call him a liar. He he's been he's been trying to show y'all ever since, bro. Receipts. Ain't no cap in my raps, bro. No, nah, no, not at all. I'm about to show every point that y'all try to disprove. I'm about to prove it right here. Also, Cat Williams. I saw him on a wild. He was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I was like, he's talking kind of wild on here. I didn't watch it um because I don't really watch Rogan. Like I didn't that, watch but... the whole thing. I just saw the clips and I was like, Ooh. I saw one clip where he was uh exp he was doing uh pyramid conspiracy things. Yeah. And uh, at one point, Rogan tried to tell him like, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of these things got lost in time because um, you know, we were brought over here, and then um, Cat was like, we. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of crazy points getting on over there. A lot yeah, of but, crazy stuff. But I haven't watched it. Um, I, I might check it out just because it's Cat and he's entertaining no matter what. So I'm assuming you haven't watched anything in the world because you've been watching nothing but basketball. Uh, not really. I, I watched a lot of basketball this week. Um, <laughs> I said I, a lot. <laughs> I, I, I got a very good laugh at the Lakers um, uh, blowing that lead the other night. What that the was hell was that? Classic to me. Um, Bulls pulled out a win over your dubs the other night. Real mm -hmm. close one. Yeah. Um, Bulls are a game away, one. man. We are a game away from being 500, man. Progress. <laughs> How you feeling about this? Um, you know, I just want the game to be entertaining, man. I, I, I have, I have no belief that they're gonna actually do anything in the playoffs, but I just want to <laughs> enjoy the games. I don't want to, I don't want to walk away from the basketball games feeling depressed every time I watch the Bulls. So I haven't felt that way. I've actually had a lot of fun watching the Bulls this year. Look at that. When's the last time have you been to like a live Bulls game? Uh, I haven't been to a Bulls game since pandemic, at least. Um, Bro, don't I even need, want to. <laughs> I need I need to get out to some games, but I haven't been to a game in a long time. Uh, <laughs> hey, Tyrone Kidd, you're right. Magic are balling, man. Give them all the credit in the world. Orlando Magic are actually playing really good ball right now. Shout out to the Magic. Shout out to y'all. Uh, let's get into a few Super Chats, and we'll talk about some wrestling uh brian white is a new member appreciate you being here brian white uh appreciate jay you. esquire 13 says i'm still high off attending AEW revolution that was my first pay-per-view in person that mr was crazy darby crazy as f and need to chill first pay-per-view was that is crazy yeah really really good show um really enjoyed AEW pay-per-view uh AEW revolution we'll get into it a little bit i i don't think we need to do like a huge recap because we both reviewed it <laughs> we did yeah immediately after so if y'all want to yeah. hear that exactly but we'll definitely get into it uh shauna walensky says hi guys thanks for unlocking the memories of recording songs off the radio on a cassette tape see we're really getting into it today Yo, remember I, to hit play I, and re record the 90s were fire I, I didn't get that far into the weeds, but absolutely. I was definitely one of those kids that recorded stuff off the radio. I was I was around for that time period. Again, Different time. You said mixtapes. That's the original mixtape for me yeah. was making a song, picking a song off the radio, waiting for another one to come on, record that one, waiting for another one to come on, record that one. That's the original mixtape for me. God, we're grandpas. I swear, you guys. I swear, young kids in here, we're hip. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's why, again, a Toriyama thing, when I was looking at something I drew from Dragon Ball, like, maybe a few months ago, I was like, I've been, like, drawing stuff from Dragon Ball for almost 30 years. You really think about that? That's nuts. That's insane. 30 years of being something? 
some there's the people watching this that haven't been alive for that long though. Yeah, I know. That's why I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm out of here. It's over. <laughs> I'm out of here. It's funny as hell. Man, Twinblaze says so. Glory Pro is going as doing a show April 21st, the same day as Dynasty in the same city. Tony, why are you counter programming Glory Pro? Ooh, I didn't know about this. I didn't know about this either, but we did get the announcement that AEW Dynasty um, will be in St. Louis in April, April 21st, I believe is the date. Yep. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, it sounds like a good show. Um, based off the stuff that's been teased on Dynamite this week and coming out of Revolution, sounds like it could be a great show. You pulling up? Um, it's right there. It's real close to me. So, uh, right. t- temptation is making me feel like I might have to pull up for that one. Because it's a different pull up than driving across the country or flying across the country. Like, you can, would you say you can maybe catch a train over there? I can either drive or carpool it or hop on a train. Mm. And a flight is like an hour or so. It's a real quick flight. It's right there. Aha, aha, aha. But yeah, yeah. sorry, Land Twin Blade. That's unfortunate. Glory Pro is, they have a pretty loyal fan base, yourself included. So I'm sure it'll be something, but that's just unfortunate when that happens. Uh, more, most unfortunate is probably because they're going to use people from that Glory Pro and they're going to have to cancel on the date. That's probably the real unfortunate thing. But maybe not. Uh, Sal Cruz says, uh, Sting's last match was wrestling version of the Kobe 60 piece. He went out and left it all out there. <laughs> By the way, Sting's greater than Taker. Don't hate, but it's all facts. Yeah, I know a lot of people that are of that opinion that love Sting. So I don't think you're in that one alone. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, like I said we'll get into it in a minute, but I thought it was a great way for Sting to go out. Yep. That's all of our super chats for now. Appreciate everybody. If you want to submit super chats or humper chats to your boys, go ahead and send them. If you want to say something, if you want to be somebody, if you want to go somewhere. <laughs> do, 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 do. You're going to be somebody. Uh, see, so yeah, let's get into some humper chats. Uh, first one's from Jason Rev. Oh, he real says, quick, 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 quick. Your hat. Um, What's up? That's fly, your hat. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh. Of course, you can still buy Grab mm-hmm. City caps at yeah. grabcity.bigcartel.com. Um, I got the initial sample for it, which was black, and that was yep. before I put them all up in the different colors. And when I saw the maroon one, I was like, that, that kind of looks hard, man. I'm going to grab one. And mm-hmm. so when I saw it, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to eventually get one. Just got it this week. Very hard. If you want to get that, definitely copy some, you guys. Everybody looks dope in their Grab City merch, too. And when you yeah. take a Grab City sign again to a show... That shit just hits like crazy. Yeah. Just, just, um, a, just a general statement. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to grab a cap or a shirt, grab cd.bigcartel.com. Yes, sir. Um, from Jason Rev, he says, for graps, uh, Phil, can you break down House of Torture for us new to New Japan <laughs> pro wrestling? Why is there so much hate towards them? Reg, where are you hoping to get Okada Omega Five? Uh, you wanna you yeah. wanna take your Omega Okada <laughs> question first? Yeah, totally. I think uh, there's a few options here. Um, you could do Forbidden Door, even though Okada is a, a an official AEW member now. It's doesn't seem the same, but it's still kind of the thing. But I think you know, All In is really probably the destination with the size and the magnitude of the show. And having to follow up last year, I think this year they need to put on an even harder card. And how's how do you top that? You know? Yeah. Um, Simeon, we do not have Grab City do rags. Um, that sounds really, <laughs> really funny. But we do not have Grab City do rags. Um, which uh, another, Dragon Ball, know. <laughs> another Dragon Ball thing I thought about um, the other night. People putting all the videos up and people put up the clip of Thundercat Dragon Ball do rag. Mm-hmm. Great record, great really video. Great song, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, uh, I, I suppose this is a good spot to get into uh, New Japan Cup uh, because New Japan Cup did start this week. Um, <laughs> usually a pretty exciting time for New Japan fans. Um, of course, Jack Perry made his debut in the New Japan Cup, taking on Shota Umino, he um, and he, he won. I thought it was a pretty solid match until we started getting into the interference and shenanigans stuff at the end. Uh, um, how's I, this uh, New Japan work compared to AEW work? Um, it's it's similar. He works a similar style. Um, mm-hmm. It's It's interesting because I don't think that he's 
I don't think that he's gotten over with that crowd yet. So that crowd mm-hmm. doesn't know him well enough. So he still doesn't get the reactions when he came, comes out. When he came out, he had like this big, weird looking goat mask on. Um, <laughs> so he's still doing the scapegoat thing. He's got the scapegoat arm. Oh, man. Ah, and, gotcha. <laughs> but I thought the match was getting good um, until uh, House of Torture interfered. Um, <sighs> Isn't this the biggest issue with House of Torture? Styles of Torture, if people don't watch New Japan, it is uh, an offshoot of Bullet Club. So it was uh, Evil left uh, LIJ and he joined the Bullet Club under Jay White, who's now with AEW, of course. And um, then he started his own sect of Bullet Club, which is basically like its own thing now called House of Torture. And it's him and Dick Togo, uh, show bunch of other new japan wrestlers that i like but um <laughs> and, and the thing is i don't hate house of torture it's, it's like i like i like a lot of people in it i like a lot of the guys wrestling but it's like when you see the same like interference and shenanigans uh mm-hmm. over and over and over again it's just like please just do something else it's, it's kind of where we're at with the roman stuff um so i think that's why some people hate it so much because it's supposed to get heat and they do get heat but i think there's a lot of fatigue with the house of torture style matches um and the issue i think the biggest issue with new japan is it's always in like some super important tournament or like the uh, the rest of the stuff is like killing it and then there's that one sore spot of like and then there was house of torture interference and it's like well why (laughs) yeah so yeah so getting into this match and getting um Jack's New Japan Cup debut. This is his first match with the company as a whole as well. Um, I just wanted to see how different he would look over there. I wanted to focus mm-hmm. on the wrestling. And for for the entirety of the match, that's what we got until the finish when House of Torture came out and cost Shota Umino the match. Of course, um, he's been feuding with House of Torture uh, since the beginning of the year, coming into Wrestle Kingdom. Um, I figured that Shota was losing um because i figured the story is um how is he going to make his way back i really like the story going into the match as well and they talked about on commentary a little bit of both of these guys came into the match with expectations because shoda's one of the new three musketeers Mm -hmm. and of course jack is one of the four pillars of AEW. and so you put those guys in the the tournament it's just like Uh all right who's going to come out on top and then we don't really get an answer we don't get a definitive answer because house of torture interferes and then afterwards jack perry joined house of torture i did not have that on my bingo card for 2024 (laughs) no not at all um Jack Perry is now a member of House of Torture. Um, and people were not happy about it. <laughs> I I was very confused um, very early in the morning watching it because I was watching it live and I was just like, this is like really happening. He's like really wearing the shirt. I, what? Um, I, and I, let me just, let me put out the logical answer first before I get into what I don't like. Let's start with yes. love. Um, I don't think it's a terrible idea because, um, He's not getting reactions. And so I think putting him in a heel stable and putting him with guys that are, you know, popular over there and so hated by certain Western audiences is going to help him. Right. Um, I think it's going to help him develop a character. I also think, because like I explained earlier, earlier, um, they're an offshoot of Bullet Club. So I think that gives them him yet another tie to the Young Bucks of him being a guy that went over to Japan and joined the heel faction and that's probably going to lead to the story of him coming back to AEW at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, Two good things. I like that. But it's just like once you get to the matches itself, it's just like I just want to kind of see him have like hot New Japan matches. And we're not going right. to get that with the House of Torture stuff. It's, it's going to be unique, but it's going to be more the House of Torture shenanigans that I've kind of grown tired of. Um, and so if every single finish is going to be that, it's going to be bad. Yeah. So, um, and they've done interesting things with it. Like the day after he joined, uh, show was supposed to team up with evil and others in a multi-man tag match. And, uh, show is now doing this injury bit saying that he got hurt in the anniversary show, um, in his match against Naito. And so he's not going to wrestle for this entire bit of the tour. And so taking a spot in a tag match was Jack Perry. So Jack Perry has now done all of the tag matches in between there. Um, so we've already got three Jack Perry uh, New Japan matches, but they're all with House of Torture. 
which is mm. not what I expected at all. Yeah. Um, so it's not the worst idea in the world, but I just was like, what are we doing? Um, I think if you're on the spot right now where you're worried about New Japan after Okada and Osprey and Jay White and Tama Tonga leaving, um, the, the, the start of the New Japan Cup is not filling me <laughs> with a lot of hope because um, we had a lot of weird booking decisions here. Like uh, there were good things like, uh, like the Kenta match, I enjoyed Kenta versus uh, Yoshihashi. I enjoyed that. Um, uh there were things like uh i thought the the, the main event from the other night uh shingo versus yuya Mora, fire the best match of the tournament so far um but then you've got other things like ishii losing to chase owens like my what what are we doing here why why are we doing this um yeah it just man the, like i said it's still new japan so i oh, still wow. i still enjoy some bits of it i enjoyed uh I enjoyed uh, Yujiro Takahashi taking on uh, Yano the other night. It was a very Yano match of Yujiro, first of all, bringing back Peter. Uh, if you're trying to get your thirst off, Peter was back in the building. Um, uh, but then he also tried to out weasel Yano. Nobody can out weasel Yano. You can't, can't. You can't out trick the, the, the biggest trickster in the world. Mm. Um, so all of that stuff was funny, but boy, some of the rest of the stuff around these two, these three nights of shows man i it, it just like i said there were things I, I liked about it but there were also things about it that just were not for me man um <laughs> phil said if you were worried stay worried <laughs> yeah man i i don't know man like if you come into this thinking like all right these three guys are the future of the company ren narita um shota umino and yuyu amura and suji because mm -hmm. they've told you that three of those guys are the three musketeers um mm -hmm. and coming into this immediately shota umino lost <laughs> <laughs> um and he's continuing to lose kind of the same way that he lost at wrestle kingdom and i'm just like all right why are we doing this uh suji suji won his match suji is uh doing cool things again i like the yuya match with uh shingo i i really hope shingo wins the the new japan cup that's kind of my pick that i want to see win mm -hmm. i'm not sure if i believe that he's gonna win though um but they're doing this lij excuse me um they're doing this lij storyline throughout the new japan cup that they want kind of two lij guys to win mm -hmm. and get all the way to the finals and one of them ends up challenging naito and that stuff is cool but man some of the stuff around it buddy mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. yes yeah, so, rough uh... The Jack Perry joining uh, House of Torture was unexpected to a lot of people, it sounds like. Very, very unexpected. But like I said, it doesn't have to be a bad thing. This could work out well for Jack. But, man, I have just just not very interested in more House of Torture matches. I, I literally screamed at my TV at one point when it was happening, like, no, Gato, what are you doing? <laughs> it, and that's why I posted that uh, the gif of uh, of uh, Matthew McConaughey and Interstellar, because they very much felt like, th like that, like, Murph! Murph! <laughs> yeah. New Japan saw uh, in the... Uh, TNA Wrestling saw what New Japan was doing and said, hold my beer, because last night, I don't know what the hell was going on. Uh <laughs> I didn't watch any of the show, but when I saw the results, I was just like, what? Uh, oh, hmm. I have a lot of thoughts, but, you know, I didn't watch the full show. I only saw the results, too, and I would, I would have to get into that. But, yeah, everything I keep hearing about New Japan, like the faith and, and the fans are not – happy at this moment and i think coming out of like you said Al okada osprey jay white all these big superstars you thought that they were going to focus on the youth and maybe switch into something different and they just got more into the shenanigans and i was like i don't think that's yeah. what everybody wanted it seems like they're very much into bringing um you know gaijin guys over and trying to make them a fixture like bringing in um your boy uh, we, nick Nanny. Bring, <laughs> bringing in uh nick nemeth mm -hmm. bringing in riddle um Ooh, and i forgot about riddle you've got like the new japan strong show coming up at windy city riot so um i think that they're trying to you know continue to branch off into the u.s um which could help but 
Oh man, it's just so so many things that I am concerned about, and none of none of what I saw over the last three nights of wrestling alleviated any of my worries uh, as a New Japan fan. That again, there's stuff that I really liked, but other things I was just like, oh, <laughs> but why? Why are we doing this? I, I'm I'm telling you, uh, when when Ishii lost that match to Chase Owens, I was very close to picking up the remote and cutting it off. I was <laughs> like, why? Why are we doing this, Gato? What are you doing, man? <laughs> What is Gato doing though? I, I I don't know what we're doing, man. Um, Do you think that since they're doing, they're about to have two giant New Japan strong shows here in America? Do you think he's like, let me do some American shit to try to get more American fans? Because these are a bunch of American angles and things that he's doing. Yeah, some of this is just uh, maybe maybe that's what he's doing. Maybe he's just trying to. Um, put Shota through the paces to get people more on board because that's very much like a, you got to put the baby face through as much adversity as possible. Um, but just linking him with this house of torture stuff for so long, I don't know how well it's going to work for him. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, we we got a, we got also got like a Tonga Loa Great Okan match in the first round. I was just like, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but uh, it, again, there were things that I like, like the Yoshihashi Kenta match was good as well. Yoshihashi, of course, won, and he's going to move on to second round. He's going to face Sonata. Uh, Jack Perry won his match, so he go he will be facing Toru Yanu. That'll be a very interesting match to see how that plays out. Um, <laughs> we've got David Finley taking on Tama Tamaloa after David Finley uh fought for his life the other night against TJP because TJP is of course still angry at him after the feud with United Kingdom and it looks like he ran their leader away beat him up on the way out in that cage match <laughs> um and so TJP came out and was beating this man down for most of the match I was just like wait a minute is uh is uh he gonna win this match but of course you know David Finlay ended up winning so t Finlay will be taking on Tonga Loa in the next round of course Chase Owens will be taking on Hiroki Goto every time you say Chase Owens my stomach hurt I yeah when I saw that matchup I was like oh well Ishii's gonna win and we're probably gonna get like a cool Ishii Goto match in the second round nope we're getting Chase Owens Hiroshi Goto why I don't know I, I don't know I don't know I don't know uh uh, but yeah, e Evil also has a bye, so he'll be facing Hikaleo in the next round. Uh, Shingo won his match against Yu Yumura, so he will be taking on Gabe Kid from the War Dogs. Big fan of Gabe Kid. He had a very he had a pretty good match with um, Caleb Newman in the, in the first round. Caleb Newman has been groomed as like the new uh, United Empire member. Uh, I thought that was a solid match, and like I said, I'm big on Gabe Kidd at the moment. I think He's Gabe good. Kidd versus Shingo is going to be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Very much looking forward for, to that match. Um, but yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of flaws in this first few nights of uh, New Japan Cup. <laughs> I hope that it gets better as it goes. Um, but yeah, that's we're here. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it will. Hopefully, it does. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just not looking so good at the moment uh yeah let's uh let's uh, get back into some more uh humper chats um mm -hmm. <laughs> uh we got more from jason rap he says uh where does revolution 2024 rank in your all-time pay-per-view ranking uh your wrestling taste uh do you think there has been a more stacked roster than this um where does it rank? I think it's kind of easier to rank it among AEW pay-per-views. Yeah. And I think based off of just like just how memorable it was from like the the last match and uh like some of the high high points of the show, I think it's among the top 5 AEW pay-per-views. Yeah, I think I'd say that pretty easily as like the mission statement of AEW was accomplished that night. And I think that people are going to look back very fondly, especially on the finish of this show as one of the best AEW shows of all time. Definitely top five in this whole uh, wrestling history that I'd have to really sit down and think about it. Yeah. I couldn't put it into perspective at the moment, but it's sitting really good, you know, days later off of it, almost a week later. Yeah. But I I'd say it's in the top five, right up there with like all out 2021, mm -hmm. uh, revolution from last year revolution mm -hmm. has a really good 
stretch of matches there has not been a single bad revolution card so far um, that's what i was asking denise earlier this week was like is that is the revolution brand the best wrestling show uh, that AEW has it, it may be because when you look at like the stretch of a run of revolution shows they've all been really good um yeah, but I, I'd say it's up there. It's up there with, like, Forbidden Door as like well. Like, almost Forbidden every Door. match of the year of AEW comes from Revolution. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Revolution is starting the year. 2022 with Punk in the entry. Like, yo. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got the Iron Man match as well from last year. Man. Um, yeah. A lot of really, really classic What was the 2021, ma- like, the, the tag match? Was that Hangman and Kenny versus the Young Bucks? Like, people yep. talk about that. Like, Revolution, I think. I don't know what it is, but they got it. Yeah. Of course, uh, Revolution will also be marred by the exploding barbed bar wire death match. Um, that was Revolution. That was Revolution. Um, mm. But, yeah, I really, really strong stretch of shows um, mm-hmm. <laughs> under the Revolution brand. Um, like I said, we both reviewed them. I reviewed it for Fightful's post show and then you reviewed it with Denise. So mm-hmm. I don't think we need to get into like the entire show. Um, I think the high points were really, really good. The points that I wasn't as into didn't bother me nearly as much because the high points were so good. That's I mean, exactly how I felt. I mean, uh, this guy Osprey just continues to give us classic matches. Um, Osprey versus Takeshita was amazing. It is it is easily in my conversation for match of the year. I feel yep. like we say this very often every when Osprey wrestles. We get he did it. He's talk. already done it again. Yeah, we get on here and talk about this guy has had like a match of the year already. But man, that match was amazing. Um, I, I I know we also give you know a lot of credit to Osprey, but man, Takeshita is special, bro. That guy is really, really good at the wrestling. That Wait, counter he got two back to back fives, huh? Osprey. He's a yeah. sick individual. What a sick Bro. guy. That two counter, matches in a row. <laughs> that counter that Takeshita pulled off of that ice cutter into the blue thunder bomb. Oh Ooh, my god. Boy. There that, was uh, moments in this match where I screamed. That was one of them. And of course, the brain the buster. The brain buster. Yeah, man. Drag this guy down the turnbuckles. Um Man, just so many great moments in that match. The the counters in the match, the the, the strikes, the rolling elbows, um, mm-hmm. Osprey being Osprey, hitting him with that nasty finish of the Tiger Driver, and then finished it up with a hidden blade. I was like, well, uh, get this guy a bowl of sunflower seeds and <laughs> send him on his way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the way that Osprey goes one thousand percent in every single match shines and so heavy already in these two appearances that he done the Takeshita match was like we knew it was going to be amazing coming into it's like there's no way these guys could have a bad match but then they had like an even better match I think than we all expected the way that Takeshita could absorb pain but give out and counter and power and heart and charisma in his matches all while using facial expressions to get by and Osprey is just like he's perfect in every moment it's almost like i want to see him have a bad match at this point it's like okay i like this is how do you keep doing it he's done two in the last week and and the Takeshita match was like coming into aew and we already knew who osprey was but i still think there's like a contingent of fans that were like i don't really know about this guy i got it like what's the hype and that match was like, no, this guy is one of the best wrestlers in the entire world, and we are lucky to have him. Yeah, really, really incredible match. I, I feel like they got to figure out what's the next move with Takeshita as well. Like, awesome. I, we already know that Osprey is gonna get like a good run of matches. We already know that he's like a big important signee, but man, they got to figure it out with Takeshita. Man, you, I, I think that he started off hot as a heel, and. Uh, just just lost his way i i hated that he wasn't in a continental classic i hated that he mm. didn't really have any good follow-up to beating kenny twice um they gotta figure it out with this guy man push this guy man he's just too good man um he i'm not saying that partners now yeah and i'm not even saying he needs to always win or he needs you gotta put a belt on him but man i just want to see this guy wrestle as often as possible he's just that good um there's an international championship that he could definitely hold right now 
and go yard with. Like, you got to do something with them. Coming off of every single time he's put in position, he knocks it out of the park. Like, you got to do something with them. Yeah. I think this also, if you were one of those people, like, get him away from Dime. Watching this, it was like, all right, it, we might be done with the Dime stuff. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's time to let him be free and and, and fly. Let, let him spread his wings, man. It's, it's time. <laughs> um, but, and yeah, lot. Yeah, a lot of good matches here. I thought Roddy coming out and beating the ever-loving shit out of Orange Cassidy was fantastic to watch as a guy that has been wanting to see Roddy unleashed since he's come there. This was a lot of fun to watch. I thought it was a great way to end Orange Cassidy's time as champion. Um, I I guess I enjoyed the women's match more than most people because it seemed like people online did not like this match, but I enjoyed it. Phil, I was confused the whole time because coming up the show, I was like, hey, that was a really good match. I liked everything that they did in it. I didn't, you know, it wasn't anything. I was like, that was terrible. I like liked it a lot. And then I got online and nobody really agreed with me. I was like, yeah, hey, what I, happened? I liked it. I liked Mariah May coming out. Um, cosplaying as uh, Mariah. I mean, sorry, Mariah cosplaying as uh, Tony Storm. I thought uh, I thought the story of that of um, Deanna thinking, all right, I got my friend back. No, no, no. No, you're still getting timeless Tony Storm. You're still getting this gray filter. You're still getting the weight belt. You're not getting none of what you thought you were going to get. Uh, but I also just love the story of Deanna forcing Tony to wrestle her style of match, exactly. um, wrestling a more technical style. Mm-hmm. And, you know, in the end, she still cheated to win. And and I thought that that kept Deanna um, hot coming out of this. I think you mm-hmm. can go back to this match if you want. Um, and you could do more with Deanna following this. I thought Deanna had a really good showing. I thought this showcased what she's good at. Um, but I was confused. I was confused why people didn't like this match. Yeah, same here. I thought that they played to her strengths throughout the whole match, and I thought that just the whole angle and all everything coming into it, I was like, this is great showing for Deanna as a whole. So I didn't really understand what was going on. Oh, uh, off of the Roddy and um, Orange match, we didn't talk about your boy Kyle O'Reilly showed up back in the game how'd you feel about that i was ecstatic to see kyle um because we heard at one point that he might not wrestle again and they were making his injury seem like it was such a um grave injury and so Mm -hmm. i was really really excited to see him um i i don't know what he's going to be doing i don't know what this means but i was just really really happy to see him i'm really glad that he's back and he's um able to wrestle again Kyle O'Reilly's one. Of, he's one of the most special wrestlers in the world, honestly. The way that he can elicit emotions from people, people don't understand what he's capable of doing. I, maybe don't. It's not that they don't understand. They probably just forgot because he's been gone for a while. But when he comes back and starts cooking with this new roster of people, somebody was asking us about if this is the best roster we've seen in a long time when he comes back to this roster we're going to be like holy shit kyle o'reilly might be the best wrestler in the world which is crazy considering who else is there this roster as it stands probably the best wrestling roster of all time i'd i'd say i don't even have to think about it like i could think about it all the of all the times there's like maybe five really good wrestlers on a roster at max uh at a same time maybe 10 but now it's like you could say 15 to 20 wrestlers in AEW that are amazing, that are like the best wrestlers in the world. Like if we talk about, we could say 10 wrestlers, 15 wrestlers right now, and then I'll say Pac, and he's better than all 10 of those people. You know what I mean? It's like this roster is insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought the tag match was also very, very good. It was one of my favorite mm-hmm. matches of the night. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we know what FTR comes to the table and does when they get good dance partners and when they're motivated. And I thought they had a really, really good match with Mox and Claudio. Um, I think um, coming out of this, go figure. I was like, man, Blackpool Combat Club looks like a really good tag team. Not surprised because both of these guys have experiences as tag team wrestlers. They do. Um, but I really, really like this tag match. Um, I, I really like the story of it. I really like the dynamic. I said on on the post show and later on Twitter, um, they they established themselves as part of this like um, dichotomy of tag teams in AEW. Like if FTR is uh, Boston um, and the Young Bucks are Los Angeles Lakers, then Blackpool Combat is the bad boy Detroit Pistons. And it was 100%. very enjoyable watching him them beat down on these guys for most of the match. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, have, I have to figure they're now one of the favorites to win this tournament, right? 
Yeah, coming into this match, I really didn't. I didn't think I got the story or what the motivation was. But then when they started getting into it, I was like, oh, I understood. I like this match a lot. I thought it was an awesome work, yeah. kind of like FTR style, but mixed with the BCC. I thought both sides kind of showed both of their strengths. FTR with a, a Southern style tag match trying to cut off the uh, BCC. And BCC just like, we're going to beat your ass. Claudio has so much wrestling Man, tag Claudio. team wrestling history like he's you could name like four or five teams that were amazing that he was a part of so like it makes sense that him and moxley are cooking it's funny coming into this tournament i didn't think i think maybe what moxley is like he's continuously been so hot it's like where do they kind of position him coming out of like the the main event scene the being a heavyweight champion and stuff where they position him and then him and claudio start cooking it's like oh it makes sense now they could be uh, a big part of the tournament, maybe a spoiler, maybe even win this. Feel like there's a bunch of places they can go. Yeah, um, I I definitely agree that Claudio Claudio was the MVP of this match. He was so amazing. Good. That step he, up, uh, European uppercut. Oh my god! Yeah, that springboard he did, man, so good. The the, mm. the, the uh, <laughs> catching uh, Cash coming out of the ring, doing that dive as well. <sighs> With the uppercut just so so good man claudio is just incredible another like guy when i said there's 15 great like claudio he's just like subdued but if he went 100 if they were like claudio's in the main event for an hour we'd be like this guy's the best wrestler in the world too this is crazy yeah i i, I feel like this looked a lot like his time with the bar as well as it was kind of like yep. the similar um style of wrestling mm -hmm. um man he was just so good here uh i thought them coming out in uh legion of doom um gear as well was a, a nice touch as well because we also know that ftr are tag team dorks and so like for them to come out with like their version of tag team wrestling to combat their version of tag team wrestling i thought was also just a cool um story is a cool moment for the night um listen i don't know nothing about the big homie Seamus's contract over there but if he came over here and him and claudio got it back together i think that shit would be hard <laughs> yeah um <laughs> Yeah, man, I don't know what he's doing, but, you know, he's been tweeting a lot. Um, it seems like he's ready to come back. I know he had an injury after the edge match. Mm. Um, so after I don't know. After the edge match? Yeah, after, <laughs> remember, Edge's last uh, last match on SmackDown. I'm like, damn, how long has it been? <laughs> it's been, it's been a minute. somewhere <laughs> else. <laughs> uh, it's been a minute. Uh, but, yeah, I know he's been injured since then, so I don't know what his, his status is. But he's been tweeting a lot, so hopefully that means he's preparing to come back. Um, yeah, big dog need to come back. But, yeah, I think the BCC are going to be dope in this tournament. And I like this kind of story that they're telling with FTR with the loss going into the tournament because they're always heavy favorites in any tag team kind of format. So them coming off a loss and, like, not being in the top seed going into this, I think is really interesting story to tell. Yeah, um, I, like I said, I think this makes uh, BCC a favorite. I think it kind of makes them like the big bads to beat in the tournament. It does. Because um, you're also going to have the Bucks in there that, that are heels as well. Um, yeah, I'm And we know really Bucks never them. loses. That'll be surprised to see him lose something, so. <laughs> yeah, um, I can see them kind of like filling the same um, position that Mox did in a Continental Classic where they rack up a lot of wins and like yep. one of the one of the teams that either makes it to the finals or wins it is gonna have to get past them. Mm. This tournament's about to be insane. Who's your favorite to uh win this whole thing? Um well I mean I feel like straight away it's tough to not say the Bucks are favorites to win. Um right. my pick that I want to win is private party i want private party to win this tournament um i think that they would get a lot out of the win especially like just their return and, i mean just even that part about it like having private party um and top flight being a part of this tournament and you can keep um going with that feud i mean they had some exchanges last night that were really funny um <laughs> uh some of the twitter stuff from that this morning that i was laughing at <laughs> oh, i forgot really, about the durag <laughs> really really funny um i yeah so you know, I, I, I keep that my boy dude isaiah cassidy is so funny <laughs> very very funny um like even if they don't win i want private party to have a good showing in the tournament same well both those teams for me are either for my pick because either private party or top flight bias yeah but heavy bias you guys i don't care i heavy want bias. these guys to have the, i think it's been like the history of aew has shown that both of these teams have shown up for a lot of the times and kind of deserve something like this but there's so many teams here that it's going to be hard for those two teams specifically 
to go over like BCC or FTR, the Bucks, but it's a really exciting time. Lucha Bros are going to probably be a part of it. It's like all these yeah. kind of great, uh, a great time to exist in the tag team wrestling. They're finally going to do what AEW was put here to do. So that's exciting. Yeah, might we might see uh, Infantry because Infantry showed the up train. on Rampage last night. It'd be Let's cool go. to see them in it. Let's um, go, homies. Shout out to uh, Carly and uh, the Captain Sean Dean for getting called up. Is that how this works now? I don't know. ROH, they were as great stalls <laughs> more than the, uh, the ROH reboot over on Honor Club. And I think they established themselves. And last night on Rampage, they were like, hey, the Infantry was in ROH. And now they're over here having a good time. So that's great. Hopefully they're in a tournament and having a great part of that. Also a kind of a, a thing, I guess it's a great transition into another great match of the show. Brian Danielson and Eddie Kingston had one of those like <sighs> Brian Danielson. We've talked about five wrestlers already that are amazing. Here he is again in this position. We talked every single week on this podcast how he doesn't want any of those championships. Leave him alone. But he's still going to give you the match you want. Um, I think in this card with we've seen some matches with Osprey and K Takesha that were 100 miles per hour. This wasn't 100 miles per hour. This was just a smartly worked Brian Danielson beat you down type of match. Eddie Kingston showed all of his heart in this. I think his spinning back fists and, and uh, suplex of this were insane. But Brian Danielson is just in loss. He still showed that he is Brian Danielson. That's what I love so much about it. The promo that they did afterwards of Brian being like, I, I, I'm sorry for continuously thinking like that and not seeing that Eddie Kingston is exactly who he is. Being in the ring with him showed me that uh, he is the ex exact opposite of what I've been kind of projecting onto the fans. So that was a great match. Eddie Kingston beating Brian Danielson decisively and getting the handshake. Great story was told. Yeah, really, really good match. Um, I, I really like the uh, dynamic of Eddie using the strikes for most of the match mm -hmm. and uh brian trying to catch him with all of these uh submission moves um when when he uh when he hurt his hand on the post he starts smelling blood and as he said in the post uh post match uh segment he was like yeah when i i, I realized at one point that you know i f really fucked his wrist up because i'm really good at fucking people up <laughs> yeah. this guy this version of brian is just so great um it's perfect <laughs> So, yeah, no, I, I love this match. Um, definitely one of my favorite matches of the night. Um, I love that we've kind of got a continuation of all of the Eddie and Punk stuff and the collision mm -hmm. stuff kind of wrapped up in yep. this storyline. Um, and I think yep. that this was the best way to kind of like tie a bow on all of that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I was half expecting when they were doing this stuff at the end and Eddie was saying, this is all I ever wanted was respect from the boys. And he was like, you guys were my heroes. And he was saying, he's naming all these people. And I was like, you're going to say Sam Punk? And he did not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> It's probably um, one you want to leave out, I think. <laughs> I'd have to assume he cannot say CM Punk on <laughs> AEW television. Um, but, um, yeah, I really enjoyed this. And I think the after uh, promo added so much to it. I, I thought the same about the promo and stuff with um, Daddy Magic and Garcia after that oh, match. I yeah. thought that added so much to Garcia's story. Mm -hmm. um, I really like that. Um, I thought the title match here was really good. I think the title match was in an unfortunate situation coming right after what a lot of people considered the match of the night. But yeah. I thought the triple threat was really good. I thought the, mm -hmm. the match itself was great. I thought the story was great. I thought Hangman being Hangman, healing it up for most of his match was great. Um, he got me to boo him at several points in this match <laughs> in my home alone, <laughs> not in the crowd, just booing him, watching my TV. Um, I thought Swerve was fantastic here again. This guy is really good at wrestling, man. Those transitions he does are just so fire, man. Um, he was great. He pulled out a spinal tap here, which I was just like, mm. what? Where did this come from? Um, Joe also was great. I love that. I love that Joe started the match, um, prepared for everything these two guys were doing. Like, oh, no, you guys have been busy arguing. You thought I was going to come in here and just take the night off? No, I'm ready for everything you guys are doing. I'm not I'm not falling for any of the shenanigans. Yeah, my favorite part of the match was Samoa Joe's urgency. Like, every single yeah. pinfall he was either trying to be involved in or he was caught up or, tr like, he was looking at every time the ref's hand was hitting the mat, he was like, my belt is on the line and I have to stop this. 
he, like you said, he had counters for all of their shit. He knew everything that they were going to do. He came into this match so prepared with them fighting at each other. I thought both of the other two guys were amazing, though. Hangman Page getting us to boo him, being a shitty heel and knocking every ref out that comes in. Uh, Swerve was from the entrance gear, the crowd going crazy, him transitions in the match, the swag that he does. It's his time, man. World champion. It's his time, man. I coming out with the uh Craven 100 gear. I at Come one on. point thought like is he doing like a Kofi gear with like the mm-hmm. sleeves, but he's doing a Craven 100 gear. Uh mm-hmm. man, he was just so great in this match. There was and a I'm couple like, moments that I bit like I thought he, he got was, me. He was he's so close. He was so <laughs> close. Um yeah, he he looked tremendous. I think mm-hmm. the story the uh between him and Hangman of um Throughout their rivalry, they've been more acting like each other the entire time. Right. So I think going back to the belt thing and, you know, the thing that costs Hangman the title at Double or Nothing is he he was reluctant to use the belt on Punk. That's what mm-hmm. cost him the match. And this, he wasn't reluctant at all. He came straight yeah. in there and used it. And yeah. then on the opposite side, Swerve was kind of in his position where um, he could have used the belt as well, but he didn't. And he lost because, you know, he second guessed certain things. But also, I really loved the finish of Hangman tapping out so that Swerve mm-hmm. could not win. I thought that was a great way to finish it. Yeah, really good story. I was wondering what kind of thing they were going to do uh, for the finish. Like, is they going to do a Swerve stomp and run in? My least favorite finish, is, uh, triple threat finish, is wrestler hits their finish and then the guy comes in, pushes him out of the way, and then he rolls him up. I hate when they do that. So I like that they did this. So it, it depends on the execution man. of it. Most of the time, I hate it so much. <laughs> but uh, I, lo- I did like this finish a lot of Hangman being like, if I'm not winning it, you're definitely not winning it. Not My one goal win. in this know. life is that you don't win this heavyweight championship, so I will tap out. So neither one of us get it. Really dope story to tell. And I thought that all wrestlers, because people were like, how is this uh, match going to – what's this going to compare in the triple threat history? And I was like, it's kind of hard to tell with – some of the great matches that we've seen of all time, but I thought that they did a great job and they paid, they did a couple of callbacks to the famous one from TNA with Samoa Joe. So I thought this was great. Very unfortunate situation. You could have put any match in the world after that Takeshita and Will Ospreay match. So I still think they did their thing. Yeah, it was going to be a tough act to follow for anybody. And I thought that they did a very good job of keeping the momentum of the show. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, really enjoyed this match. Uh, man, I was sitting at the end like, dang, it just feels like it's Swerve's moment, but maybe not yet. Maybe he's going to win it in St. Louis. Um, it might be another reason why I might have to pull up to that show. You can find me in St. Louis. Which one of the St. Lunatics you think are going to be there? <laughs> Murphy Lee? The dude with uh, the mask? Um, <laughs> what was maybe. the dude with the mask name? Uh, is it a slow down or something like that? <laughs> I don't know. Slow down. <laughs> so, what is that? Sound like a, a, one of the dudes from Pretty Ricky's name. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> See, R and B is not the same because uh, the singers used to have names like that. Like your name would be like Ecstasy or something. You know what I mean? Like now, there's just like Jeff or John. Um, <laughs> I don't know like, how we got here. Where were we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, and, and it's funny because I know all the St. Louis six names, but I'm like drawing it blank. What is the guys with the the mass name? Is isn't slow down? Um, but the yeah, slow down, Key John, City Spud, uh, Murphy Lee, Ali, and Ellie. How do there you know go. all the St. Louis six names? <laughs> that rap man, wait, it's that leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, it. Is, is, is Jaquan the one with the mask? No, Jaquan is everybody in the club getting tipsy, ain't he? No, you're thinking of a different Jaquan. <laughs> See, I don't know nothing about the St. Lunatics. Tangents. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, really funny. Uh, but yeah, the main event of the show, uh, the big stinger. He did it, they done it. What did you think about uh, Darby Allen uh, killing the business? <laughs> Can't believe he would kill the business again. See, I was right. Sly- Skywalker is saying, no, you're right. It- it's slow down. That's it's right. Down. That's what I thought. Slow down is the guy with the uh, this mask on. <laughs> um, 
Look at so, me, knowing, knowing my, my Nelly uh, trivia. Um, you really do. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, I thought the main event was really, really great. Uh, mm-hmm. I thought it was a great way to send Sting off. Um, I thought just starting all the way from the entrance to entrance was incredible. Um, the man, video. The video and um, when his sons came out and they kind of started with like the way his AW theme starts with the snow and everything. And then, man, they hit Seek and Destroy, bro. When that crowd started singing Seek and Destroy, man, goosebumps, man. Just such a great, great All moment, over. man. Yeah. I, was, I was sitting there getting emotional. And I was not a Sting kid, but it was just such a cool moment for him. Uh, just um, his sons walking out first and then yeah. him behind him. I'm like, this is crazy. <laughs> Yeah, so, so cool. Uh, I thought the match was great. I thought Darby mm-hmm. being Darby, <laughs> Darby's always going to find a way to hit some kind of crazy spot that's like, please, please, sir, just be careful, man. I'll like, And I thought it was a, the, the, the funny thing is I thought it was a great call back to their first match together because if you remember, Darby got thrown through glass in their first match at, at Revolution, mm-hmm. um, the cinematic match. He, it was just a different way. He got ragdolled and thrown through the glass, and he decided this time he's just going to jump off <laughs> the ladder through some glass. Um, also, another nod to one Jack Perry because uh, the Bucks uh, may have done it intentionally. I don't know, but um, yes, cry me a river. Crimea River. It was a lot. I've seen a lot of Crimea River just that night when it happened. Um, mm-hmm. But I thought the spot looked really, really cool. I thought uh, yeah. uh, all of the angles I saw of it, the fact that it's showing up on so, so many different outlets, it looked really, really cool. Glad that he's okay. Please just be safe, Darby. His back <laughs> looked horrible when he rolled over. I was like, oh my God, dude. Just uh, please just be careful. <laughs> Honestly, Phil, after that promo he did on Dynamite, I'm like, I would rather see that a thousand more times than you climb that damn mountain. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about climbing Mount Everest, and he was saying, you know, I don't know if I'm going to survive this. I'm like, Darby. I'll take a thousand more ladder matches if you're not going to do that, because God damn. But yeah, I thought that that spot looked awesome. Like, I rarely, I watch so much wrestling, Phil, that I'm rarely speechless. And when it happened, I was just like, with my mouth wide open for like a minute straight. And then when they switched to him and his back's bleeding again, I'm like, what? I didn't like, you know, when your brain can't process what you're watching, it felt like one of those moments, but it was a really cool visual, really cool spot. I love pro wrestling. I love death match wrestling. I love some wild shit. And I thought it was a great moment to add to Sting's retirement. Darby coming into this was like, I'm going to do something nuts. You guys, it's Sting's retirement. And he fucking did something nuts. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to a friend of the show, Kelsey. She was in the front row and she took a really cool slow-mo pic video of him doing it. And I was just like, this looks incredible. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Kelsey was also sitting next to uh, uh, Christine, who's also from Chicago. I see her at Impact Shows a bunch, who was also sitting next to Westside Gun. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> shout out to them. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I thought this was, uh, I, I thought this was uh, a lot of the notes I expected. Uh t- staying uh powering through a lot of young bucks offense and just like not going away um of course love their nod to rick flair and hbk <laughs> of them saying we're not sorry we hate you and proceeding to double super kick him i thought that that was a great moment i laughed you, very hard at it. you saw what conrad said about the uh about rick flair i didn't <sighs> Conrad got on his podcast and said that that night Ric Flair was trying to convince him to go to Tony Khan, convince Conrad to go to Tony Khan to convince Tony to let Ric Flair turn on Sting during the match. Like his whole thing during that day was like, it would be a great angle if I turn on Sting during the match. And Conrad was like, why why would I do that? It would make more sense if you did it, but also don't do that. (laughs) Yeah. So Rick Flair tried to ruin this moment. Sir, we 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 did not need that. Thank you. But thank you, but no thanks. Um we did we not need that. Um Rick Flair was of course in in the mix here. He got he got some he got some licks. Um uh Ricky Steamboat. <laughs> Ricky Steamboat also made a appearance and he 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 took a super kick to the face as well. Um Young Bucks were beating up on old people throughout this match. Um mm-hmm. I thought, you know, for people that um, didn't understand why the Bucks were the guys that Sting picked, I thought that they 
absolutely show why in this match because they were yep. fantastic as mm -hmm. the heels. I thought that they were great at getting heat here. I thought that they they're just so much better as heels, man. They just are. <laughs> I, I, I just love the way they work as heels. They I love are. the way they taunt as heels. They're just naturally unlikable and it's just like I just think they're at their best as heels. I grow to love the greatest pro wrestling tag team of all time, the Young Bucks, Matthew and Nicholas Jackson as heels when i first would go to pwg yes. i was like i didn't like these guys i didn't like the super kick thing then i started to get it but when i started to get it is because they were heels that everybody hated so much and they came out to hansen mbop and everybody just yes despised these guys they thought these were the worst tag team in the world and i was like these guys are the best tag team of all time but this match showed exactly why every position that they were in every spot like they just understand wrestling so much like Everything clicks when they are involved. And I love that they didn't do one super kick until they got to this match. And then they brought the super kick back. They kicking a bunch of people. Sting, I love Sting's sons getting their little spot with the, the stinger splash. Is like this match had so much emotion and it was such a perfect way to send off Sting. Yeah, uh, man, Wolfpack Sting was getting some air on them Sting bro. splashes, bro. That guy was up there, man. I was like, man, what are you doing after this, bro? You you might want to cool. like go and like try and like do some training. Yeah. You 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 want to still wrestle a little bit more? Because uh, he was uh, man, he looked. Bro's about to jump out the ring. Yeah, he was jumping out the gym. I was like, all right. Uh, but yeah, Bucks were great here. Just as characters, they're just so fun to root against, and I think we saw more of that on Dynamite. Um, but yeah, I thought that this was a really, really special way to end the show. I think that this was a very memorable finish to a show. Um, yeah. Man, I, I thought Sting uh, had a really, really good run with AEW. I, I said it mm -hmm. last week when we talked about it. I think this is going to go down as one of the best things AEW has done. Yeah. Um, and I think giving him his moment and letting him go out on a high note. Um, I saw some people that were tweeting me like, you called it the whole he was going to get his confetti the night of because he didn't get it when they won the titles. Call it. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that that was a really good moment for him and Darby. I really liked, um, uh, we didn't get to see all of his speech, but I liked once once he started uh, talking and you see the locker room coming out and Darby was a part of the guys on the, uh, up there with the locker room. So cool. It was just such a great moment, man. Yeah, well, I love that when they won the match immediately, you can see the, the emotion in Sting's face of like, this is it. I'm going to retire as champion all my family is here but th honestly this is the last time that i'm gonna have something like this as a full-time wrestler just such a great moment at, at the end everybody's celebrating him all the wrestlers coming out him getting to hug all his family ringside and everything just perfect uh, yeah i think I, i'm like what would they think is better that they've done coming here i'm like brian danielson's run i'm like the sting might be their number one thing so far that they've done like to completion yeah I, I think um you know giving uh giving brody the win over cody's up there as well uh bro just how he beat him and just like their send off well i, I don't mm -hmm. like saying send off show but their yeah. um their show when he passed away i thought was really really touching as well um, i like the way they handled that yeah really uh, good but yeah brian's run is going to be up there brian's had an amazing run with aw because people were like, uh, who's going to get another thing like this after Sting? And I was like, got to be Brian, right? If he's retiring, we nobody really knows. You know, when when he's actually retiring. We don't know. When Big bro's retiring. having a lot of fun outside. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely having a lot of fun. Um, yes. Yeah, so hop back into some of these Humper chats. Um, yeah. We got more from Jason Rev. Um, he says, uh, what are your thoughts on the Ruby and Soraya, Soraya, Harley, and Zach on Rampage Angle. Um, I love that they have an ongoing storyline there. I've really enjoyed it. I, I I think we don't get that many love storylines in wrestling, and I thought mm -hmm. they did a really good job with it. I, I think it's some of the best stuff that Soraya has done with AEW because she's just naturally funny in this stuff. I think um, Ruby is just better as a baby face as well, so I'm glad she that is. they're turning her. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah, I've enjoyed it. I enjoyed it for what it was. I think Rampage is a good spot for it as well because it's just kind of like harmless television. And I think Harley's benefited as well by being a part of it. Yeah, it's so funny about Ruby that every company keeps trying to put her in these mean girl factions. And, like, that's not her draw at all, dude. Like, her comeuppance and the way that people 
grew to love her was this like fighty fiery baby face and like do that that's what she's really good at and it's shining here i don't know if like their relationship in real life makes it feel even better but like the chemistry is like adding so much to the yeah. angle i think and uh yeah soraya putting this position i think is the best harley putting this position is the best and i think uh zach knight is gonna benefit a lot off of this because he's a super talented guy he's the stuff that he's done on ring of honor is awesome and i want to see more of him yeah uh I think we got through all of Jason's. He sent us four total. Oh, he, he sent us one more. Um, uh, for Phil Grapsa, <laughs> as, a, as a New Japan fan, uh, what do you think of Jack Perry there so far? Would you be upset if he won the cup? Reg was Jack a PWG kid. I am manifesting him join the elite. Um, and we get a Hangman, Kenny, Abushi, and Darby versus the EVPs, Okada, and the Scapegoat. Um, I so far I think he's doing okay. I think the shoulder match was good. I think what uh, I I I think the House of Torture stuff is what it is. Um, I'm still just trying to let it play out and see where it goes. Um, <laughs> but, Does he have a shot at winning? Um, I think he has a good shot at going pretty far now that he's linked with House of Torture. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't I don't think he's gonna win the whole thing. Yeah. Um, but you know so far you know so far so good out of three nights i'm not hating him being over there um <laughs> very curious to see what he's going to be doing at windy city riot um he asked you it was jack a pwg kid oh yeah jack perry was definitely around the socal wrestling scene for a lot of his childhood you can watch shows from years and years ago and see him in the crowd he is attached to the uh, young bucks for a reason it's real <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i the promo afterwards after his first match i was just like uh this scapegoat stuff is just, i don't really like the scapegoat thing it's not really hidden for me but i was just know. going into the fucking privileged rich kid entitled guy thing but i understand yeah but i i, I like that he's coming into the promos with a lot more fire than he showed definitely um, when he's with aw um, some of the subject matter I just think that's why I'm just like really, right. it's not really hidden, but I do think that he's showing a lot of conviction and a lot of um fire in it. Um, they're not bad promos. It's just like some of it is just like, well, that don't really make sense. Mm, but I feel yeah. you. I know, I know you're heel, and so you know when mm -hmm. when people are heels, they they get their. Got a lie. Yeah. yeah, that's how it goes. Um. See from Tyrone Kid he says, uh, "What's up? What's up, Graps? Uh, there's a lot to say this week. First off, rest in peace to Toriyama for giving us old heads something to rush home from school to watch, bro. The struggle of trying to catch the, the bus on time to get home in time to watch <laughs> Dragon Ball Z every every day after school. Because man, if you missed that episode, you that was it. it. You yeah. you could not rewatch it until they start watching showing the reruns. Um, mm -hmm. uh, he also said." Uh, <laughs> Kevin Kelly going off wild uh, is wild, uh, but is there a chance we get Veda Scott um, and MK Ultra splits because no Masha at Wale Mania? Um, yeah, I would love to see Veda get get his spot. Um, the Kevin Kelly stuff is absolutely crazy based off of what we saw online. Um, we can uh, see your tweets and stuff, you guys. Yeah. Everybody's watching all the time. Uh, I think Devada does have a really good shot at getting that thing. Also, yeah, yeah. So She's hopefully, hopefully, I would like to see Veda uh, commentating on television. And I don't think the Killer Kelly being announced for Wally Mania without Masha has anything to do with them being a split. Being split, I think it has something to do with Emilio being really funny. Because his tweet last time when she was with their sister, and he's like, "Hey, come to Wally Mania." I thought that was so funny. I forgot he did that. <laughs> and she's and coming to Wally Mania. I forgot he did that. <laughs> I thought that shit was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I totally forgot he did that. Uh, shout out to Emilio. <laughs> uh, yeah, from uh, Black Phoenix Brand, he says, uh, Revolution was insane. AEW is restoring the feeling. Uh, who would you guys put the tag straps on next? Also, have you seen the meme about The Rock 
slash Roman versus Cody slash Seth tag match all being due to Jungle Boy. Um, I have not seen that meme. Um, we got to answer that question about who we put the tag mm-hmm. steps on, right? Yeah. Um, I have not seen that meme. Have you seen it? Yeah, I've seen some people talking about like if, if we wouldn't have this if it wasn't for Jack Perry doing this kind of like series of unfortunate events. And it's just really funny, I think. <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of true. <laughs> From uh from Nelson Muntz, imagine telling a non wrestling fan what happened to Sasha, Brett, and Punk in WWE, and telling that person that they all either went back or have already said in an interview that they will go back eventually when they just signed with another promotion. Uh, he goes on to say what Mercedes said in an interview this week about her eventually going back to WWE is LeBron. It's like LeBron going to Miami and already saying in the press before he even played a game for the Heat that, of course, he will play for Cleveland again one day. Um, yeah, of course, this is stemming from Mercedes being on the Kick Rocks podcast uh, during an interview with Evan T. Mack. Um, uh, there's been quite a few quotes that came from it. Of course, her quote about um, leaving WWE. This is kind of like the first time she spoke on um leaving of course she didn't go into detail of what actually happened um but you know the, the other big talking point of course is uh the, the other clip that came out of her saying that yeah, i'm gonna end up back there um it didn't really bother me because i've always felt like she's gonna eventually go back to wwe i just think that it just looked crazy for her to say it but the other part of it is uh, because this interview happened before she signed with AEW, is you kind of read it like well we don't know what she's gonna do yet of course like if you like, but of course she is going to AEW. I, I I don't think there's any doubt in most people's <laughs> minds that she's going to AEW at this point. So it just makes it all funny. And of course I know what fans are going to do with it. Like, how dare you? You can't say that. But it, it didn't really bother me personally. Yeah, it didn't really bother me. I didn't think it was a thing to call home about, but people were upset about it. I think if like we're still trying to add some mystery to this, like they're giving us a lot of signs, like big business, Mercedes, blah, blah, blah. But if we're still trying to tell this mystery story, she could still say, I might go back to you going to see me back in WWE one day because that's a wrestling company. That's something that exists. I have so much history there. So it didn't really bother me, but it does look a little bit crazy if we're going into a show at another company and the talk is that you're going to go back to the other place one day. But, you know, that's the game. I'm not surprised. Uh, Yeah, it's about to be really fun with Mercedes and AEW. I do know that. Um, yeah, really it didn't, it didn't really bother me, but no. I could see why people would be upset with it. Um, and like beyond that, like hall of fame, like yeah, she's going to go, if back she there. never wrestles there again, she's going to be in the hall of fame. So she's going to go back there in some kind of form one day. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, conflicting messages. I'm sure that's why, what Nelson Muntz is saying here. And I understand that, but for me personally, excuse me, it didn't really bother me. Um, we got a few humper chats here from Tony P. Uh, he said, when you have a, we have a nation mourn you more than they did their queen when she died. The Mexican people and the cartels have a ceasefire in your name. Um, you have niggas pouring out <laughs> in your honor. Uh, have Chinese government honor you. You know you made an impact. Um, For real, so. Have fun running uh, Snake Way, Akira. Uh, also, congrats to Sting on on a fine career. Uh, you deserve that send off. Um, yeah, what a what a what a what a send off you just gave Akira Tozawa. <laughs> sure. I'm about to say Tozawa again. Um, mm-hmm. What a send off you you gave Akira Toriyama here. Like mm-hmm. I did not expect that Tony P, but appreciate you. Um, That's real. He also gave. Uh, there's another one. His uh, penny of the week goes to Darby for saying "fuck his spine." <laughs> his that's mine. <laughs> has had his back for years he keeps doing it dirty and damn shame man for real though petty of the week goes to the bucks kicked out kicked out kenny and brought his biggest op into the crew yeah definitely had to go to the bucks for petty of the week saying that they didn't know why he's not at work um (laughs) crazy Uh, that is really petty (laughs) they win um yeah but yeah appreciate you tony p we got more We got one from Coffee Black. Uh, that Roman line wasn't it. Trying to match the Rock's attitude and era. Rock, sorry, trying to match the Rock's attitude era stick is a dangerous game. Also, calling people soft for not liking that line is corny. Um, 
You know, we'll get into some of the Roman stuff that you're talking about, but uh, this elicited a very weird online response. I don't know why people got so upset at people that didn't like it, but it's Twitter. I don't know. Like people have the right to be upset at something and you don't have to be like, y'all are soft. It's like, that's not really how this works, but I get it. Yeah. Uh, it's rock humor. We have Brian, any... Brian Gowertz. Is Brian Gowertz back there? He is back there. Um, he is, have... right? <laughs> he is. Um, mm -hmm. Do we have any more Super Chats while I'm trying to refresh? Because I think we have more Humper Chats. Yeah, we do have some. Uh, Van Twinblay says, come on down, Phil. I got some raves and try some barbecue from Poppy's. Get the pork steak. Yeah, sounds like I'll be and there. Lewis. Mm -hmm. Can't confirm just yet, but sounds like I'll be there. I want to be there too. Uh, Meet Norma says, Sup, fellas, in the Mortal Wards of Rick James, it's a celebration. My bum ass Wizards finally got 10 wins, only took 63 games. Definitely enjoying wrestling. Thanks, Meet Norma. Yeah, man. Took the took the Lakers down to the wire the other, other night, took them all the way to overtime. Uh, yeah, Wizards, uh, I don't know what's up with those guys, man. <laughs> Rough year. Very young. Uh, Bragov just became a new member, but he's been around for a long time. Appreciate you, Bragov. Uh, Eloquence says, uh, uh, R.I.P. Akira Toriyama, uh, Namek Saga molded my childhood. Yes. Yeah. Namek Saga is fire. Mm. Uh, Alejandro Reyes says, uh, Cartel in Mexico allegedly dropped thanks to DBZ. <laughs> What's going on? Where are these stories y'all are reading? I don't know where that story of the ceasefire is coming from, but that's that is hilarious. Really I don't know funny. if that's real or not, but that's really funny. <laughs> uh, Delayed Grat says House of Torture needs to license all the old Hot Boy songs for entrance music. Wheezy, BG, Juvenile perform the live intro. That would be really funny. Yeah, that would be pretty funny. Uh, Luis Polito, shout out to Luis. Says, uh, look, Yano beating Jack Perry would be funny. I listen, I would laugh for the rest of the year if Yano wins the match. <laughs> I, hope he does. I, I don't think that he will. And it, it just the idea of him winning and it sparking a similar met, a meme as a uh, when he beat uh, Mox in the G1. <laughs> no, I forgot about that. Gato, you can't let this happen. It. Come you on, can't. Gato, don't do it. Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> uh, Bergav says, Happy Graphs today. RIP Toriyama. Drew is the best hater with the gripe bomb tweet and playing punk's music in his car to booing fans. Hype for big business. Happy birthday in advance, Media Man. Thanks, Bergav. Um, Drew is doing incredible work. That That tweet of him. Um, driving by the fans that were booing him and him playing the, the, the punk music was really, really funny. Um, yeah, he's he's been great. Drew is uh, definitely locking into it. I'm appreciating it. Uh, Caleb Cassidy says, happy early birthday, Reg, for the sushi fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Appreciate everybody for the happy birthday wishes. Uh, Van Twinblade also says, I need losers online to stop certain trolling about Darby. The man knows what he's doing. He practices the stunts before he does them. We beg for these. We beg for this for years. Now we have it. And now chicken heads are screaming about chicken it. heads. <laughs> ball, ball, chicken, chicken, chicken head, ball head, scallywag. Shout out to Project Pat. Um, and shout out to Van Twinblade. Yeah, people, the, them forcing AEW to put out a statement being like, it wasn't the most dangerous thing in the history of the world is annoying. Yeah. It's wrestling, people, dude, we know. People doing their concern outrage about this was very odd. Like, nothing, no stunts, nothing ever big bumps like this happened just on the show for the first time ever. Like, Darby isn't like, I'm going off the script. I'm going to do this. And nobody yeah. in the back knows. This was, this was a plan. Not spot. how this works. Not how wrestling works. It, yeah, it was, I, I thought it was very clear watching it. That was a planned spot, but like every yeah. time that Jeff Hardy's done one of those big ladder bumps, they practice that. He didn't just go out there and do it. It's not how this works. Yeah. Sometimes he might have though. He's pretty nuts. Uh, Isaiah World says, "We here. Happy early birthday, my boy. What's up, Phil? Bless up. Uh, MB, I'm late. Uh, I want Mercedes to win the AEW Women's Championship day one. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care." They want it. it. I wouldn't be mad at it. I don't think it's gonna happen though. That's Wednesday. Allegedly. Allegedly. 
<laughs> Irene C says uh, AEW's roster is currently the best of all time, which rules, but will also be a chore to book since there can't be a world champion. The he's being buried since everyone can't be world champion. The he's being buried discourse is about to go into overdrive. It's going to be nasty. Yeah, not looking forward to that at all. Uh, not at all. When Okada's not champion in six months, and there everybody's like, yeah. he's being Okada's being wasted. Should have should have went to the Fed. He ducked the ducked the grind. Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Don't. The worst people suck. Uh, Me Normus also says I was at the first Dynamite where Private Party beat the Bucks. They need to run that back at the finals. At the same result. I love that match. Yeah, I would love to see it. Uh, last year says Sheeta versus Athena at SuperCard Wrestling is back. Let's go. Very excited for that match. Uh, WrestleMania weekend. It seems like we have been very favorable every time we go to Supercard of Honor. We've got at least one banger like this. So very yeah. excited to see this match. Yeah, this is probably the best use of Athena at this point. And Sheeta is the MVP of AEW's women division. And they've talked about this match for so long. Like, you just know they're about to go crazy. Very excited about that. Uh, Reggie Simmons says, shout out to Reggie Simmons. Uh, just saying, what's up, fam? This show stays hot. Grabster Day, the best day of the week, for real. Appreciate you. <clears throat> and then Stephen Marcusili says, is there a scenario where both Rock and Roman stay heel post-WrestleMania title loss? Um, I don't. I don't think so. I think at the very least, uh, the Rock One will be a face. I mm -hmm. think Rock will be a face after this. Um, there's that report that came out that they're they're hoping to get Rock on one of the Saudi shows. And so I don't see, I, I think we will see Rock versus Roman um, by the end of 2024. Same. What, uh, maybe like, a, do you think the turn's going to happen at WrestleMania or they're going to work towards it at WrestleMania? Um, I definitely think Roman is eating a rock bottom at WrestleMania. Gotcha. And I believe that that is happening. Mm -hmm. That's all of our Super Chats. Appreciate y'all. Uh, we've got quite a few more Humper Chats. Mm -hmm. um, before I jump into the rest of these, I'm going to hit a pause Let's for the cause that. for you guys. And mm -hmm. um, we are going to get a word from our sponsors. We've been telling you about the benefits of FitBod.me slash PPV for quite a while now, but there's so much more. 150,000 five-star reviews, over 5 million downloads, 400 million workouts logged. A lot of people have tried out FitBod, and now you can too. You can get 25% off at fitbod.me slash PPV. All of your subscriptions give you full access to their premium features. You need to stop guessing and start working. They have daily workouts that generate your workout of the day based on your muscle freshness, preferred muscle group, and things that you want to target. There's equipment selection, so maybe one day you have bands. Maybe one day you don't. Maybe you have weights one day. Maybe the next you don't. Maybe all you have is the ability to do body weight exercises. They help you out by using the equipment that you have available. There's goal and experience settings. There's muscle recovery. You can connect to your Apple Health, your Fitbit, your Strava, all that good stuff at fitbod.me slash ppv. Street counters, timed intervals, circuits and supersets, and you can ask trainer or ask a trainer if uh, the video demonstrations and exercise instructions are not good enough for you. Fitbod.me slash PPV. That's F I T B O D dot M E slash PPV. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I guess I wasn't the only one like, man, probably should this, uh, probably should hit this ad read. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's perfect timing. Um, perfect timing. Um, <laughs> we got more Humper chats here before we, uh, jump into some more stuff from Dynamite. Mm -hmm. Um, See, we got some from Tony P. Uh, he says, am I an asshole for feeling put off about the tweets made by the WWE women and defending Bianca hours after that shit <laughs> been up online? Um, I am glad they did, but the quickness that they came to the defense for Maxine versus this pissed me off as a black person. Uh, now, I don't know if any of them knew about it beforehand, uh, talked to her personally about it, um, or if they did before the tweets, et cetera, et cetera. But no one said anything until 
from what I saw, um, E spoke up and then they started shooting <laughs> shit in defense of her. Um, right, Tony. Uh, hold on. Uh, he's got he's got some more. He's he's still going. Um, <laughs> uh, it's just this reminds me that as a black person, especially black women, are dis- disrespected and looked down upon on the regular. Uh, still, even with these feelings, I am glad that they rode hard for her along with WW as a whole. Uh, along with the others. Uh, this makes me dread next week where Mercedes debuts. A disgusting behavior about to happen. I hope the real ones are prepared to keep the same energy because you know some of those that stood up for Bianca are going to turn around and say sick shit about her. Um, on a light note, <laughs> well, well, hold on before I, before I get into that one. Uh, the Bianca stuff was interesting. Um, I... I, the when the ni- initial tweet popped up, um, I was not shocked by it at all. And I mm-hmm. think if you followed Bianca's career at length, if you followed any of like the big name black women's wrestlers in this space, it shouldn't have shocked you at all. Because right. anytime I tweet anything complimentary of her, there's a sect of fans that are very weird about it. Um, yep. When I've written about her for Bleach Report and other outlets, there's always weird people that happen to mention and say like weird stuff um mm-hmm. so i wasn't shocked at like the casual racism here at all because it happened so often mm-hmm. um uh i i did initially think that it was a little bit disappointing that so many people didn't come to her defense like they did for maxine but i also have to keep in mind that i don't think most of them saw it and so i think once they did people started coming out and supporting her and so i thought that that was a good moment um uh, because um, we shouldn't be just, you know, turning a blind eye to these things, especially if you're mm-hmm. in the industry. I think that we should call these things out when we see them. Right. Yeah, it's happened so often that it's disgusting. So there does need to be something about it because there's a lot of women that came out off the backs of that to be like, yeah, we experienced this too. So it needs to be brought to the light and it needs to be addressed because this is disgusting, man. And like... The talk around Bianca is always so weird. Every time we do mention her, there's always like asterisks or there's some yeah. kind of something put on. And it's like, no, she's amazing as they present her and as she says she is. I hate that they try to put some dumb shit on her because she's a black woman. And that's what it always comes down to. Yeah. Uh, for context, if people did not see it uh, or if you're mm-hmm. not on social media, um, there was a screenshot of a post from IG and it had all of the all of the cover stars for 2k24 on it and someone was saying yeah we keep keep the keep the other two but just not bianca and right you know it was some other stuff said there that had i want to say un- undertones overtones to it mm-hmm. um and i was just like yeah i mean she earned her spot on that cover as well like if if you think that cody and Rhea belong there <laughs> bianca absolutely belongs there too like right. this is a history making moment for her for to be a black woman and be on the face uh be on the front of the of of the video game cover she deserves it man she's main evented wrestlemania she was champion for a long time she's won the royal rumble like yeah. how is she not she has all the accolades to go for what you guys are saying is the reason to be on here so what's the difference i don't really understand it's so stupid <laughs> yeah but i i liked what he said in particular i liked that a lot of people came out and and spoke on behalf i i thought that that was I thought that was great to see. Um, I hope that Bianca recognizes how many fans and how many people in the industry actually appreciate her and love her. So it, it's it can be you know disheartening sometimes when you see these things. I it, it, I know it's that way for all of us online. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, I'm not trying to act like we're in the same stand against the wrestlers, but no. I think everybody that you know does the social media thing, it gets hard to kind of block out the negative shit and actually see all of the good stuff that we get, see all of the praise that we get, see all of the actual legitimate conversation and stuff where people are actually acting like normal people. <laughs> um, so mm-hmm. yeah, it was, it, it's, it's bad that I wasn't that disappointed by that comment. Cause I was like, I've seen right. it so many times. I'm not surprised by it at all. I'm kind of mm-hmm. almost desensitized to it. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, you guys are making this corny jokes again. Same thing. Oh, yeah. Heard it all before. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, shout out to Bianca. I think this is a great moment for her. Um, glad that she got the spot on the cover. Um, anybody that does not like it, oh, well. She's had two amazing 
WrestleMania matches, main events. Like, yes, put some respect has, on Bianca's name. Has has already developed a great WrestleMania resume. Has three yeah. great matches at the show. Probably yeah. gonna have another great match this year. I would think so. Um, uh, Tony P wraps up with on a light note. Uh, can y'all get Nile on here to talk about her experiences with the magicians in Atlanta at Magic City? <laughs> um, wrestling character wise, uh, that chair shot on Cody on Cody did a lot more for Spears, the character, than this 10 gimmick. Uh the chairman rules. Um I yeah, I I initially liked Sean's move over to AEW. Um and there's things I like that he did with AEW more than I like the Ty Dillinger character. So I understand what you're saying. Like mm-hmm. I think him as a lackey for MJF was great. I thought he was funny yeah. in that role. Um yeah, I never really got into the Ty Dillinger stuff like that. I know people had fun chanting 10 and it became like a meme and all these other things, but I I never really got into it like that. Me neither. Because it's like, what else? 10? What is 10? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know. 10. 10. All right, cool. What, what else? <laughs> yeah, Ty Dillinger is funny. It makes him sound Jamaican. <laughs> 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 Ty Dillinger. Yeah. I, I watched that dialogue clip again and I was dying laughing. I was like, this guy's really mad. And I'm just like, He's laughing so mad. At his pain. He was so mad. <laughs> but what did he really think, though, Phil? Like, you weren't going to come on. Though. Like, Jay Chappelle was just like there along for the ride. You wasn't about to be the biggest rapper in the world. Yeah. I, I just, you got to take some accountability in this as well, Dylan. Because uh, accountability. I don't think this was all on uh, Dave. I think that you played a good part in this as well. But, you know, I know how it be sometimes, man. <laughs> and like the thing that Dave Chappelle, the jokes were like based off real events. <laughs> like, you really did that stuff, Dylan. <laughs> and, and it was funny. I'm sorry, so funny. but it, it was funny. And part of the reason it happened is because you weren't there to film that episode. Dylon. Why weren't you there? So I'm just, you and like we still it. remember your name, Dylon, 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 because of Dave Chappelle. We wouldn't remember that if not this many years later. I, I spit out fire. <laughs> Such a great skit. So funny, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, from Life of Deem, he says, "For Grapsity, what's up, fellas? Uh, I was a Sting kid in a Dragon Ball Z. Was an insp- sorry, I was Sting kid and Dragon Ball Z." was my introduction into anime uh this was a heavy week but man what a great time um i'm wrestling and in <laughs> i think he means what a great time in wrestling mm. and in jack danielson versus osprey into my veins um yeah i think uh dynamite is a good place to start with just like what we got this week because a lot happened on dynamite that did. got me excited for this next pay-per-view um I guess like the biggest story is the Young Bucks two announcements. Um, mm-hmm. They they started off by doing a backstage part where they very much mimic Tony Khan's cadence and like him having a smile on throughout the entire thing. I thought that was very funny. Mm-hmm. Um, then they came out and they did their announcements. Um, the first announcement being that they're kicking Hangman out of the elite because he. Uh, attacked referees during the world title match um which i thought was a smart way to i guess if hangman is going to take some time off or whatever's going on with hangman this was a great way to write him off tv for the meantime and then they kicked kenny omega out of the elite and i just feel like that's just you can't kick kenny out like it's his thing like it's it's sound right it's it's the thing you guys came up with together like the story of the elite is them um writing down on paper like who are guys that they think are elite and that was like not just the start of their friendship and their start of their time as, as bullet club and all these other things and the start of this company he can just kick him out what do you mean and i don't i'm like i don't think you could do that you can't just you can't just fire him from the elite um so i, I thought it was a good heel move and i think everything about it like tony p was saying earlier very petty them saying man i don't even know why you're not showing up to work but you haven't been here of course um kenny has not been on tv because he had diverticulitis Mm -hmm. um he has health concerns um he but i thought that this was a good heel move and then they took it even further and they added 
Kazuchika Okada as the newest member of the elite. I mean, if you're wow. going to replace the best bout machine, uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty good stand-in. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, this guy has a pretty long history with Kenny Omega. Their rivalry is like legendary. So to not just kick this guy out of the group, but then to go and bring in the guy that was his biggest op from New Japan. Yeah. Pretty Boy. insane. Mm-hmm. <laughs> There's layers to this. I thought that this angle was great. Eddie Kingston coming out to confront the Young Bucks and be like, y'all told me not to say nothing, but I don't give a fuck. And throwing the money in Nick's face, really good stuff. But, yeah, the surprise of Okada debuting here in AEW, really, really, really big deal. I love the way that they brought him in as a heel along with the Young Bucks. And, yes, if you, there's only one person that could replace Kenny Omega, and it's his biggest op. That's Okada. Great story that they're telling here. And that adds on to somebody was asking earlier, when do we kind of expect this match? Like, that's a tease for this match just in itself, you know? Yeah, I I think that they did a lot of um, clever things here, not just with how they set up the announcement. The fact that they wore robes in Mm -hmm. the Sting match, I didn't even think about it until Okada came out. I was like, oh, Mm -hmm. because, of course, uh, Okada you know, routinely wears robes. It's his it's his uh entrance gear. Um yeah, I thought uh I thought the way they played this was really good. I thought Okada coming in straight away and being a heel is great because the Rainmaker at its at its core, like the start of the Rainmaker character was him as a heel. Yep. And I just think he's just he's such a good heel. He's so good at it. I I think of so many memorable things like him um shoving those balled up uh okada bucks in sonata's <laughs> mouth that time he's done so many wild things at the heel i'm very much looking forward to him um doing doing that here in america um he has the best facial expressions when he's heel. <laughs> the way that I, he just like deadpan looks when he does something terrible is so good <laughs> It's it's so great. He the way he stared at the camera after he hit Eddie right. with the rainmaker, he was just like, "What? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, yeah. I love Okada, man. I'm he's sorry. So it's, good. He's so great. I I, I mm. think one of the things that made this stuff um <laughs> when he uh when he when he started fighting Kaido out the ring, great was 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 how he was looking like. Nope. Like he kept trying to hit him in the back, and he's like, "Nope. Yep. Mm-hmm. Just like <laughs> just like stiffened his lip up, like, nope." Nope, I'm still holding this hold in. And then he got hit in the face and he was like, nah, wait a minute. Hey, yo, fuck this dude, bro. <laughs> that is one of my favorite clips, though, of him just being like, oh, dude, I'm in a hold. Like, leave me alone. And then he gets kicked in the face and he's like, I don't think this guy knows that I'm Okada. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no. Nah, just him literally turning around like, hey, yo, fuck this dude. Who is this guy? Get, get this dude the fuck out of here. <laughs> he chased him out of the ring. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I thought this was a great way for him to debut. Like you said, mm. setting up Okada versus uh, Omega Five, um, setting up so many things. Um, I mean, you said never up thought ways. we would get here. Honestly, I always believed. I always believed yeah. that that was one of the matches that Tony Khan wanted to bring to the U.S. Mm. Um, and I thought if it was going to happen anywhere, it was probably going to happen with AEW, especially right. because it did not happen at the Ring of Honor SuperCard show. Mm-hmm. Um, so I always believed that this probably was going to happen here. I think they set up an opening for Hangman to come back and have some uh, storylines with them as well. Um, they set up a lot here. I, I thought uh, it, it sure seems like we're probably going to get Okada versus Eddie Kingston at some point. Um, I think that could also be fire. Maybe that's going to be the dynasty match. Wouldn't be Eater. mad at it. Um, yeah, I, I was... Because, uh, I mean... We already knew Okada was coming. I mean, yeah. it was one of those things where it was like not a well kept secret at this point. Mm-hmm. But like, when you think about how do you bring this guy in, when you look at like stuff like with how Jay White has been used and some yeah. other other guys that came from New Japan, I think you brought him in and you immediately put him in storylines that's going to get people interested. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't know if it's going to get people as interested if you're not as familiar with Okada, but if you know like your elite lore and if you're in yep. for like all the New Japan stuff, I think this is a really exciting storyline to start off with. Yeah, if you know anything about the history of the Young Bucks and Okada, this is a great way for him to be brought in and him coming in as the fucking rich shitty heel i think is awesome and they're wrestling tonight on collision i think this is a very exciting time considering all these people coming in and kind of the energy surrounding AEW. i was talking about it on the the post show with denise uh revolution kind of felt like uh they're closing a chapter on uh a part an era of AEW, and it feels like 
with this dynamite, we're going into a new chapter and a new era, and it feels like really good energy. And starting out with a huge signing like Okada, I think is a great way to go. Yeah, I I think you know debuting with the new uh, intro. I think the new et- intro was great. I think oh. the new presentation for the show also looks great. Call back mm-hmm. to uh, the first year of Dynamite. I love um, the tunnels. The- the tunnels are back. We have mm-hmm. like a new staging um, and everything. I think that also looks fire. Um, I think like just the presentation for the tunnel that has the LED like screen over it as well. Mm-hmm. I think that looked cool. Um, and I mean, we kind of started with like the new era of like what the world title scene is going to look like because Swerve started the show with the baby face promo, really mm-hmm. hot baby face promo. Yes. Um, I will just say again, it really feels like this guy's time. Um, if you're not putting that belt on him at Dynasty, I don't know what we're doing. If Sorb isn't the champion at Dynasty, I'll be very surprised. Even with just like the like videos that they've been showing promoting the event, I'm like, this looks like looks like something. You know what I mean? Like Dynasty looks like like royalty a little bit, Mogul Embassy stuff. This feels like a great moment for Swerve. And I thought that baby freight, like official baby face promo on Dynamite was awesome because he has been so hot that match uh revolution every near fall for him everything that he was involved in the crowd was insane so it's like it's everybody's ready for it yeah the 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 swerve chance when he came out the who's house and everything when he came out it feels like the fan base is ready and mm-hmm. so man it, it just feels like it's his time man that's um, crazy uh joe joe was great in the segment as well um but yeah the the other great thing from the show is um can't have a new era without bringing back the real hopers in the building they put up the signal <laughs> big match Rio was back in the building <laughs> Ooh, and, and she came with another one <laughs> she came with a heater buddy came with a heater with statlander mm-hmm. really really enjoyed this match one of the best matches yeah. of the night for me um and statlander not for nothing man i thought she had a really good showing at the pay-per-view as well on yeah. the pre-show um really really good wrestler um, I thought this was great. I think the story stuff they're doing with uh, her and Stoke is also fire. I mean, yeah. man. Stat is incredible. I think the last couple of weeks, them adding the Stokely element has been great for her. But when Bell has the bell has rang, she's gone yard. I thought the match of Riho was awesome. Just two women beating each other's ass, throwing each other. Riho, of course, brings her heart and her soul and everything that she has into a match to just make it feel like an epic encounter. This was like, this is the kind of women's wrestling we want every week on the show. More yeah. Rio. Yeah. Yeah. More Rio on dynamite. <laughs> I was, uh, so yeah. good. Yeah. I was, I was glad they got this spot on the card. I was glad that the, the match seemed like it went over well in front of the crowd. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the main event was fire. Cause again, Osprey, Osprey don't miss. <laughs> uh, Kyle Fletcher came out there and did Kyle Fletcher things as well. Um, that match was Osprey like did it with Takeshi it's like there's no way he's gonna do it again like even when they announced the match that weekend I was like Osprey after that match is gonna go and have another match and then he gets in here with Kyle Fletcher and a lot of people have said in three or four years Kyle Fletcher is gonna be Will Osprey so it's like him kind of facing who the future of and I thought this match was like that was Will Ospreay's introduction to AEW pay-per-view. This is Will Ospreay's introduction to Dynamite, and you have a five-star match to end the show. It's like, wait, if this is what we're going to be getting, we're in for a wild ride. I thought Will Ospreay came off like a big star. Same way that Swerve has been looking great, I think this show has showed that Ospreay is going to be a very, very top-level baby face here. Like The crowd loves Ospreay, and he's going to continue to put up performances like this and it's going to grow even bigger them th- this match was insane first of all the strikes and all of will spray will osprey's matches are amazing the hidden blades are insane the mm-hmm. way that they his anytime he takes a neck bump just like he's a main event working wrestler and he doesn't let up i thought kyle fletcher was amazing in this playing underdog for this uh, trying not to die because Will Ospreay is trying to kill him with every spot. Osprey forcing him into something, trying to make him have some fighting spirit, make him fight him back. Really, really strong stuff. But the the main meat and bones for this for me is the tease that they did at the end. I was crying at the end of the show pretty much. Brian Danielson came out to confront Will Ospreay, and I'm like, we're getting this off rip, Phil? 
one of my one of my deepest regrets with the way that Cody left the company is I feel like Cody left a lot of matches on the table. Um, and there Agreed. was a lot of stuff that they were trying to hold out on to get to later. And I, I think the message in the way the Cody stuff went is like, hey, man, we might not get to get to the matches later, man. Mm-hmm. Get get to the shits when you can. And so when Brian came out at the end, I was like, oh, yeah, we're already here. Let's let's get to it then. Let's just get to it. <laughs> um, really Great strategy, excited Because you're right. You never know what could happen. There could be injuries time all kind of stuff could get involved if we have the opportunity we have healthy wrestlers get to it now like we don't have to wait for nothing let's go yeah and of course that's one of the the big dream matches straight away with osprey coming in Mm. um brian and i mean we don't know how much longer brian is going to be wrestling full time so very excited for that again that match could happen at dynasty listen i gotta go i can't miss that (laughs) listen man i am super duper excited for that um what a like what a what a span of wrestling that's going to be you're going to go from um wrestlemania weekend and then the following weekend after that is wendy city riot and then the weekend after that is going to be aw dynasty what Um, gonna eat really well in april it sounds like um but yeah all in your area too kind of well wrestlemania is kind of in your area not totally kind of um but But yeah that's um, some that's some good eating right there that dynasty match if if that's the dynasty match, um, fingers fingers crossed, rubbing my hands together. I think that that's gonna be that match. Boy, really excited for that. But this very much felt like a start of a new era for AEW because mm-hmm. they did uh, announce again that the tag tournament is happening, yeah. um, and they set up stuff for that. Um, there were not so much teases on this show, but just like the vibe with mercedes also possibly coming in you just brought in two massive free agents and osprey and okada you've got jay white as well um and now you've got mercedes coming in i think that this is a exciting time i think you could see kind of the the momentum coming back in aw favor because Mm -hmm. um it was a lot of negative buzz around the company at one point last year and i really feel like um now some of that energy is coming back some of that excitement around the product is back it feels like the fans the hardcore fans at aw caters too they feel like seen and they feel like heard and uh, coming off the continental classic was such a perfect thing to do feel like yeah they were like we have as tony's like we're gonna do the sports-based thing have this amazing tournament and people were like that feels good and then to have these signings coming off the back of it and the energy and their swerve and samoa joe and the tag division and the women's division is amazing and you're gonna have all these new additions and you got mariah may and queen Amanada and mercedes and serena deeb and like there's so many great things going on it feels like a really good time to have that reset yeah um whatever you think about tony storm as a wrestler Mm -hmm. that brief segment we got on wednesday i laughed very hard at it Mm -hmm. um mariah may standing there like she was getting ready to do the interview and then tony (laughs) popped behind her it's like ha ha i got you (laughs) 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 like yeah got you just like that donna palazzo saw she was gonna win on sunday night (laughs) really really funny oh this time is really funny then then what did she say she goes uh what season is this by the way and (laughs) Renee's like close to spring. Oh, you're not as smart as you look. Um, it's going to be the award season because we're giving away a Tony. Tony with an eye, so we don't get sued. <laughs> All very, very funny stuff, man. She's killing it. She's destroying it. And I still don't understand what that match. But yeah, I think they have so many great things going on that it's like, yo, this is the time is now. And they announced a new pay per view. They've, uh, Everything's the excitement is really good. I think tonight they have a really good collision. Um, like Brian Danielson is wrestling Shane Taylor randomly that I'm really excited about. They got some yeah. luchadors from CMLL here. The elite with Okada is gonna wrestle. Like I think the energy in all of their shows feels really good. Yeah, it feels like uh, you know, Bucks on Collision, Phil. Bucks are on collision with Okada. <laughs> Go figure. Um, um. <laughs> That's why I'm like the Daddy Kingston stuff for better or worse seems like it is like the, the end of like the punk era of collision in in Mm -hmm. a lot of ways. Um, It's weird to think about because it it was promoted as his show from the very beginning. Um, And he's (laughs) essentially like, they got a show for CM Punk. That's his. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Wild. Uh, But 
Yeah, I, I I think there was a lot to be excited about coming out of not just the pay per view but the dynamite. We've come on here a few times and felt like the follow up after the pay per view had didn't really hit. And I felt oh, the very the opposite dude. this time. Like the dynamite, I felt like after Revolution, I thought it was hidden. This was the this was the oh, best follow up to pay per view I think we've seen in a while. That is a point that I haven't thought about. Yeah, we've come on on after some of those pay per views and been like, what was that? dynamite like what were they doing what was going on no this one felt like no this is something we got energy we are real we are ready to hit y'all yeah this is how you follow up a show this is how you follow up a pay-per-view they let they had clips pan throughout video uh, packages are a thing now Phil. people like that <laughs> but how will i know who the wrestler is um <laughs> uh how, how will i know to, if i like this guy mm -hmm. um but yeah no I, I thought there was a lot on dynamite that i enjoyed um there was a lot to look forward to in the next few weeks um yes really fun time to be a wrestling fan i mean we got the new japan cup going you know the, the, mm -hmm. uh, we've got aw um get bringing back restoring the energy we've got wwe heading into wrestlemania on so fire like yeah, WWE can't not sell out a show at this point. They are going crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, the crowds are looking crazy at these WWE shows. Like it's looking bad. at that, looking at that crowd in Dallas last night. I was like, yeah, they're what? they're on fire right now. There's so many like the sold out shows, and it's like fifteen thousand, twenty. Like it's like these wrestling yeah. fans are hungry. They're doing like eight, nine thousand in like Bakersfield. And I'm like, Whoa. yo, I used to go to Bakersfield yeah. shows where they were. 2,000 people there, 1,500 people. Now there's 9,000 bloodthirsty wrestling fans. It's like, it's a really dope time. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we have any more Super Chats. Of course, send us your Super Chats. If you want to add to the conversation, you can also send us your Humper Chats, humperchats.com slash Fightful. Uh, we got just two of them. Uh, Speedpunk says, I got a question. Did they turn Swerve face? I kind of get that from his promo on Dynamite. I think that was supposed to be what we came out of that with, is that sort of his baby face. Um, yeah, I think he's definitely a face. I think that the mm -hmm. once we transitioned into the uh, three-way, I think that that was the signal they was turning baby face. And if you mm -hmm. weren't sure, I thought it, they made it official on Wednesday. Right. That's what the prom the promo was like. I'm baby fitment. Him even being like, maybe this is karma because yeah. of all the bad things that I did. I deserve this, but we still gonna get this championship and y'all gonna get this work. I think it was like, I'm with y'all. I appreciate y'all being along the ride. And now I'm not that person I used to be. <laughs> yeah, very baby face promo. Um the fact that he would not cheat in the world title match as well. Right. I thought that was a big sign that he's turning face. Mm-hmm. I mean, the match that happened after with the kingdom, I have my, you know, I have some gripes, but, you know, baby steps, baby steps. I don't, I want them to stop doing that. The tag team, one guy beats up a tag yeah. team. It's annoying, right. super annoying, but if they're yeah. tag team champions also in a brand that's part of yours. I'm like, just don't do that, maybe. But I understand. I don't yeah. understand, actually. I'm going to take that back. Stop doing that. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not the biggest fan of that either. They just keep doing it. And they're like, let's make someone ROH champion so we can have them get beat by one guy. It's like, why do you guys keep why do you keep doing that though? Yeah. Uh Tyrone Kid says, uh, Super Baby Osprey and three big dollar Okada are so different. Oh, three star big Okada are so different. Yeah, they started to talk about Okada's contract yesterday, Phil. How did you feel about contract talk? <laughs> I think some of the contract talk was very weird because it was it turned into people like was he worth this amount of money? It's like, isn't this what we should want for the wrestlers? Is That's for them to go understand. somewhere? You, you're you're leaving New Japan, and the thing that I kept hearing from a lot of people of like, oh, if he comes over here and he wants to make a bag, he had to come to WWE. All right, but then when he went to my house and got a bag, you're mad that he got that bag because you're like <laughs> WWE wasn't going to pay him that much. Well, shouldn't you be happy for him? He got a bag. I'm and confused. If, and people being like, oh, AEW's blocking people from going to other places by offering them more money. I I, I was very confused around a lot of that talk because <laughs> I'm just like, yo, that's how this works when there's a that's bidding war for point. somebody. The the person that can pay the most is usually that's going to get them. And, and I mean, when there's negotiations for somebody and when you're as big as this guy, 
Um, this guy was the face of New Japan. He arguably face. the face of Japanese wrestling. The um, entire face of the brand of Japanese wrestling, yeah. So totally. when he came over here, you're gonna you're gonna get a big deal. It'd be like if Roman decided tomorrow I'm leaving WWE. He was the face of this company. He's gonna yep. get a big bag where he shows up next. So yep. whoever signed this guy was gonna have to pay him. And this was kind of the thing with WWE being the biggest uh f- the biggest thing in town. Like they were going to be able to pay more than anybody else. That's how they've built their company. That's how they built the roster that they have. If you're gonna compete with them. You got to be willing to pay the wrestlers more than they possibly can. Yep, because you think WWE is not going to give up $3 million, $4 billion, $5 million, or whatever the numbers. Nobody really knows the numbers. The numbers are probably on some wild shit. But, yeah, if you want to compete with them, you have to compete with them. And the only way to compete with them is dollars because they got all the dollars. So if you got to yeah. offer Okada the bag, offer it to him. And beyond that, what people are forgetting, bro deserves it. All these wrestlers yes. deserve it. This dude the is the tweets came out of like, oh, Kata's making more than all of these wrestlers except these many wrestlers. You shouldn't be like, that's stupid of AEW. You need to be like, WWE pay these wrestlers more over here. That's all it is. It's all about wrestlers getting paid more. I've watched so many rec- wrestling documentaries where legends say it's not about the fe- moves. It's not about none of that. It's about who made the most money. And that's what these people are doing. And when they come and say that, when Mercedes is like, I want to make the most money. I want to be high paid. I want to be all that. People are on her back, but that's like what wrestling has been built off. Yeah, I just think it's it's crazy to think, all right, well, these wrestlers aren't making that. So why is he making that? No, it could be very possible that a lot of wrestlers are underpaid. Yep. And so I don't I just don't really understand the thinking with, oh man, how 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 is this possible that he's making that much? I don't know why. Why you ain't like? <laughs> why you ain't let this man eat, bro? Him. Like I, I just think that I think it's dope that he's making this much money. The Hell guy's yeah. been wrestling for over over seventeen years, almost hey, twenty he, years of career. He earned this, this big contract. He, he earned like this big said, contract. The face of Japanese wrestling. He had some of the I consider the greatest wrestling matches of all time against Kenny Omega. Like he has so many of those. Like what he done for pro wrestling. He earned all of this. Like he he should have more at this point, honestly. Yeah, I mean, this is a guy that if he decided to retire after his New Japan run, he'd already be in the conversation for one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. Facts. He's earned he's earned a big contract. Um, mm-hmm. And so no matter where he showed up, when he came to America and if he got a big bag, I was going to be excited no matter what for him because mm-hmm. he deserves it. Um, so mm-hmm. I, I didn't really understand some of the money talking. If we have the same conversation in a few weeks and, you know, Lord forbid, people have this weird reaction to mercedes possibly making a big bag oh but why um i don't know because she deserves it like what do you mean can't believe they offered her more than wwe to trick her like no she wants a big bag dude and she wants to wrestle at the same time like it's not really that hard yeah shout out to everybody getting paid wrestlers do more uh, negotiate leverage do all the shit in order to get a big bag yeah, you deserve he- it. we're watching this because of them dude yeah, he listen, came in with an agent and he negotiated for him. He got him the best value. Uh, That's how these things remember, work. I remembered who his yeah, okay. Yeah. I forgot I heard some things and now putting all those dots together, I'm like, oh yeah, that's why I got the big bag. <laughs> yeah. Listen, man. He didn't just come over here to just be, you know, having fun, putting on the Bucks gear and doing memes and stuff. Like, bro. Mm-hmm. Trying to get paid. If you're gonna have to change me, relocate, change my whole life, dude, like you know, make it look good. If yeah. I'm coming to America off of Japan. I'm going to change. I'm going to be doing all this, bringing my wife and shit. Like, yo, give me some money to do it. And I'm Okada off the top of it. People that exactly. saying, well, does this guy deserve it? Are just idiots that don't know what's going on. Yeah. I don't know. And I, I guess there is a, there's a valid conversation around. Is he worth that kind of investment? Because is he going to move the needle? But I simply just don't fucking care. Don't I, care. I, I do not watch wrestling to go, oh, man, they gave him all this money. Is that going to make more people watch? Is that going to is he going to change like the 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 ratings? I, I don't care. I just want to see the wrestling. I just want it to be it. a good show. If mm-hmm. if they paid him that and he comes over and the show is better. That's awesome. a W. Awesome. 
I, I don't mean, know. If I, the ratings thing is so stupid. Like, I don't know if don't, w, they're never going to get the same ratings as WWE. So going forward, it's going to get even weirder because they're going to, WWE is going to move to Netflix. The, I've seen the numbers this week. What's go, uh, I saw a story that Netflix says they consider every time someone's watching that it's two people watching. So if you're watching along, they're saying you have to, if you're watching this, you have to be watching it with two people. I'm like, they're about to screw these numbers up so nasty over there when it's game time but the way that ratings and everything works like we can't compare aew's thing to wwe at all any of it just because that's not how this work a five-year-old company compared to a goddamn billion-year-old company that's established and totally different and it's not yeah. that we have to judge aew by aew and if you're gonna think like oh numbers are in the mud the company's over just shut up leave us alone yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, the WWE is just in a different. It just you can't out to the hut. They're in a different stratosphere. They just got the the ruby, the 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 red diamond joint from YouTube because they have a hundred million uh, subscribers on YouTube. Like nice. they're just in a different category, man. And I, I'm, but you know, like I said, I've never been really that interested in ratings discourse. Like that's just not something I'm interested in doing. And that's why I'm saying like it's a valid conversation to have. I just am not that interested in doing that. Right. The homie eloquent says, uh, people act like wrestling has a salary cap. LOL. Secure that bag, Okada. Yeah, there ain't no salary cap, bro. It's dollars. Um, there's monies out here. There's uh sponsorships, people involved, all kind of stuff. Like this is a business, you guys. We don't yell at basketball players and football players for getting a bag. I mean, I guess sometimes we do. But, you know, that's just no, the game. Ben, ben Simmons has been taking all the heat this week, though. <laughs> ben Simmons cannot catch a break. Ben Simmons. Ben Simmons. I don't wild. know if I've ever seen a co positive comment about Ben Simmons ben in the Simmons, last three listen, years. <laughs> I, I'm starting to get on the camera uh, bandwagon of him but just feeling like, bro, if you just don't want to play basketball, just let us know. Just bro. say it. <laughs> Just say you don't want to play, though. Because like, he has I, I fans that are like, oh, we want you to come back and that are waiting for him. Like, if you don't want to play, just be like, look, I don't want to play, bro. I want to sit out here in these outfits, get my shit off. Like, I ain't trying to ball. <laughs> yeah, nah. It is, yeah. The amount of games he's played in the last three years for what he's getting paid is insane. insane. It, it's awesome. insane. Let my dog get his bag, though. Yeah, I feel you, but you, you, you got to show up sometime and play. Yeah. Let's get into some WWE, though, speaking of money, because I saw the Logan Paul thing of having, for the first time in the history, I've been watching WWE for my entire life, there's a big, going to be a big giant logo in the middle of the ring, a big prime bottle. Listen, people were like, this is dumb. I'm like, ah. It wasn't the worst. Somebody's like, oh, take away the bottle. I'm like, that's kind of the draw, though. Like, I don't know. I didn't hate it. I did. I didn't hate it, but looking at it, I was like, "Boy, that looks hideous." Uh, but get your money, I guess. You know, I'm honestly surprised it's taken this long, considering like I, it, it makes now sense because they're merged with UFC. But like, considering how long that UFC was doing, I'm like, how did they take so long to not have a big advertisement in the middle of the ring? You know? Yeah, I, I feel like it was inevitable. But the other thing that it made me laugh at is I was like, "Oh, Vince is really gone." Because oh, that's would hate this. <laughs> he would Vince, hate that so much. <laughs> Vince would hate this. Um, he's oh, he's he's for for, for sure gone, bro. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that definitely show it because like they haven't had it for this long is because of that exact reason. Like he don't want nothing on the mat. He don't want nothing as part of that, and so. That's another sign that, oh, yeah, they're doing ideas that they haven't been able to do for the last 40 years. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was a it was an interesting guy. I, I don't boy, very ostentatious. Like, I just, well, nah, but I get it. It's business uh, business. So. Bags. Yeah. Um, what did you think about the discourse around people saying there was only like 28 minutes of wrestling on SmackDown last week? <laughs> um, I felt like when they announced that The Rock was going to be on three shows straight, I knew it was time. It was you like, know what time it was. Rock's going to come on and talk for like 30 minutes on all of these shows. It's not really surprising to me. And like SmackDown isn't really their wrestling show. It, never, it hasn't been for the last couple of years, right? Like Raw is where you get the wrestling. Yeah, you you're tuning in for the low, the the Roman experience on SmackDown. It's on Fox, bro. Like it's different over there. I you know I, I it's not really always my, my cup of tea, but I mm -hmm. I always say that at this point SmackDown is kind of the easiest um uh, WWE show to just put on and just just breathe through and watch. Because mm -hmm. three hours of wrestling is a slog. Jesus Christ. Um, 
I think that they they purposely do it like that. Like it's Fox, like anybody can watch it, network tell it. You want somebody to just click on it and be able to just kind of be immersed in it. And I think that's what the show is. It's not like a heavy ass wrestling show like Dynamite, you know? Yeah, and I, I should I should rephrase. It's not the three hours of wrestling is a slog. A three hour hour wrestling TV show in the way that it's presented by WWE is yes. a slog. Because yeah. uh I can sit and watch New Japan and it's longer than three hours. But mm-hmm. like when you gotta sit there and you gotta sit through all of the talking segments, you gotta sit right. through all of the filler, mm-hmm. it just it just seems like it just lasts forever sometimes. Mm-hmm. Like this show is still going, huh? Um, <laughs> it's been three hours and they do another backstage promo and you're like all right bro just get to it i'm done here yeah i i do wish that they would do more with the women on smackdown in particular and i think that that's been a disappointment for me i do wish that like like they did do some cool stuff with bailey like they gave her the backstage segment um and i i thought the way bianca reacted to it was great i thought the name like that. With that was really good um I thought the the, the uh, damage control um, vignette they aired was also good. So they did good stuff with the women in terms of like storytelling and building. But where's the matches, bro? Like it, the, it feels like that's the, what was feels the most unfortunate in this new situation of like the worst things they would say about the women back in the days and the bras and panty matches and all this. They were like, oh, we would get all of our stuff cut and they would only give us three minutes of match time and that's all that they would give us for the week. It feels like that for some of the women of like, they're cutting entrances, they're only giving them three minutes, they're squash matches, and then we forget about it. Like, I don't, we, women's evolution, like we got to this big point. We got Becky, we got Rhea, we got Bianca, we got Naomi, we got all these talented women. Why are we back to them being a side project and Bailey is they're they're featuring her, but not as much as they shoot. It's like they built this great stock and they built these fans up. They built this division and it's still, they it's still not being executed the way it should. Yeah. I I definitely think they they could be doing more with Bailey. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I thought that that segment of her doing an interview and, you know, feeling like, you know, give an explanation of why she was doing the stuff with damage control and how it's blowing up in her face. And now she feels alone. Um, and now you've got four people gunning for you. Mm-hmm. Um, they, of course, set up the Dakota match for next week. Um, but I thought the best thing about this was not just her explanation, <clears throat> but Bianca watching it and being like, no, nah, I don't feel bad for her. Uh, and yeah, I saw I people that. that people were saying, oh, is this a heel turn? No, no, no. It's just her being real. Like, no, this this faction tormented her for about a year. She had to wrestle them two years in a row at pay-per-views um, because they've been a, a thorn in her side all this time. So, yeah, of course, she's not just going to immediately turn around and forgive them. Like, no, nah, y'all been a problem. So another Vince is gone booking thing that they don't usually do. It used to be like, oh, they turned. So all the people that they've wronged or just got over it and like, no, don't just get over it. Like she tormented my life for a long time. And her being like, it did feel a little little bit on the line though how she was like you weren't here like i'm like are they teasing a match because she was like you don't understand naomi nah like you don't get it like you weren't here and then at the end of her being like i said what i said i don't care just like yeah all right i don't know but i feel like that's perfectly in line with what bianca's character has been for the last few years she's just Mm -hmm. been kind of like no i said what i said like this that's that's what i meant and Mm -hmm. so yeah, I thought that segment was good because I thought it also set up reasons for why Naomi would be more forgiving because, of course, right. she was there before and she wasn't here for all of the damage control stuff. She also had, like, dealings with Bailey, but it wasn't the same. Mm-hmm. And so I thought that was good. I don't know what they're going to do with Bianca or um, mm-hmm. Naomi at this point at WrestleMania, but um, there was enough there to get me interested. I do think that they've got to start actually building the bianca match you got four weeks but it's coming like, up bro <laughs> what what is she doing like maybe maybe she's gonna do the <laughs> tiffany strat match maybe jade's on the table uh maybe she's gonna do a tag team with jade i, I mean or or tag team with naomi i don't know but that just get to it like let's start building this match you just named five really good scenarios so like execute one of them big dog what are y'all doing i i think <laughs> um when she was on a gorilla position she talked about how uh she's done so much at wrestlemania but she wants to do a non-title match because the women very Uh, rarely get like a secondary feud going into the pay-per-view that isn't Mm -hmm. built around a title and i think they have the perfect opportunity to do with her because she has the wrestlemania streak now so that already adds stakes so 
the person that beats her gets the bragging rights of being the first to beat her at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. And I think that was kind of what you could have done with Charlotte if Charlotte was there because, you know, Charlotte has claim to the title of Miss WrestleMania because she has, she has won several titles at the show. She's had several great matches at the show. Um, but now Bianca can say, well, no, I'm Miss WrestleMania because I have never lost at the event. I have three straight wins. I have three great matches. I have main event at WrestleMania like you. And so I think if, you know, Bianca versus Charlotte is the match next year, you've already got kind of a built in um, storyline for that. But this year you can bring in a newcomer like Jade or Tiffany Stratton, and that could be kind of their um, reason to want to challenge her because they want to be the first one to pin her at WrestleMania. Ah, uh, so she has stakes without a championship, essentially. A streak. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good story. Yeah, they got to start building that, though. Every time they tell us how many days are to the show, I'm like, dude, that's really soon. <laughs> so it's going on a month. Um, but yeah, I I, I like the idea of it being either Tiffany or Jade. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what they're doing, but I hope they don't just throw Bianca in a tag match. I I think they or should the do a singles match. Big battle royal. That shit would be. Awful. Oh, you cannot do that. Like especially like they had Bianca at the kickoff show. They've had her on all the posters. You can't just throw her in, in a battle royal. Mm-mm, that would be disgusting. But yeah, I like the work that they're doing. I'm glad that they're being featured. They just need to do more. We can't have two minute matches anymore. Like you have too many talented women for that. Um. Yeah. Main event. Uh, we had a <laughs> we had a we had an interesting week of uh, guys throwing out uh, catchphrases that may or may not have landed. Um, but, and we started with uh, the stuff on Raw. I thought the segment on Raw between Rollins and Cody was good, mm-hmm. but we got the diarrhea, Dwayne. One part of it wasn't really that good, <laughs> thing, that. which I. I get Rollins' intent, but boy, was it not funny. I was sitting there like, that was just not funny. It did not hit for me at all. But he was essentially trying to make the point, and he's been making this point for a minute now, that um, Rock's whole shtick is him just doing the catchphrases, him doing the same humor that he did during the Attitude Era. Nothing has changed. His material has not changed. He said this in an interview. So Mm -hmm. I thought he was trying to um, basically out-rock the Rock by starting the diarrhea uh Dwayne uh catchphrase and right. the crowd chanted along with him and so I was <laughs> like oh I, I see what he's doing he did mm-hmm. like the same call and response and everything but boy if you do not like that style of uh promo if you don't like it when when the rock like it does it it was even less funny here it just was Damn. not for me but again I understood the intent of what he was doing and so um when we got to Smackdown <sighs> The thing that I like the least about the Bloodline (laughs) um, segments, and I've been enjoying a lot of the Bloodline stuff and a lot of the build for this tag match since the kickoff show, but having to watch the long entrances and have to sit there through all of the long pauses and everything before we get to it. On a TV show, dude, like, what are we doing? We shouldn't be watching a 10-minute entrance video on a TV show. it, It took a minute to get into it. Now, with that said, Rock's entrance was fine. I, I was it. like, that is that's gonna yeah. go crazy at WrestleMania. With that, on that big stage and everything. Yeah, that's heat. That's that's gonna be mm-hmm. that's gonna be hard at WrestleMania. Can't wait mm-hmm. to see that. Um, but yeah, having to sit through the long entrances and the long like pauses and all of that, I'm just like, man, just get to the segment, bro. Um good, big bro. So yeah, I thought the segment started fine. Um, I guess before that, Rock dropped another uh uh, IG promo dropped a lot. Another oh, selfie right. promo. Um, I thought the selfie promo was a, a, a bit of the same of what we've seen. He was doing a lot of repeating the catchphrases he's done, but it's the rock. And this guy could sell us on the stupidest stuff. He could say the, the most nonsensical stuff. And it's just his charisma. It's just a delivery. Um, when he started making fun of the dog and he started like whispering to himself, I was in tears laughing. Like <laughs> the rock made a bunch of memes. Like he knows exactly what he's doing for sure. Yeah. Now nah, him, him, uh, he's like, man, your goofy ass dog. Then he looked around with it. Pharaoh. Pharaoh. Hey, Pharaoh. Hey, 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 Pharaoh. <laughs> now you should call that dog shithead. Hilarious. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, him, him telling people, man, off is a direction you can fuck. That's going to be everywhere. Mm. Um, like no doubt that's going to be everywhere. Um, 
yeah, it was a lot of stuff he did. The 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 cowboy hat, him singing at the end. Uh, it felt like a lot of his greatest hits, and mm-hmm. um, I think he's been smashing it with those promos. I think he's been smashing it on SmackDown as well. Um, so you know, his part in this in the stuff on SmackDown was more of the same. I enjoyed most of it, but boy, there was stuff in this that also just did not hit for me. Um, <sighs> I thought, uh, I thought the build up to this of having them finally all all four in the ring again since the kickoff show mm-hmm. and they've been building up all the stuff on raw of you know these guys kind of have it together they're getting along they're friends now i thought that that was one of the best notes from the segment on monday by the way is that mm-hmm. when cody did inter- introduce rollin and had him came out and he was like my friend i was like right man we're two years we're two years into this of them feuding at WrestleMania, feuding for a whole year, having a Hell in a Cell match and all that stuff. And we're to the point where they're now friends. And mm-hmm. so I thought all of that was good. That was a nice touch. Um, having them come out uh, on SmackDown, not just having it together, but they did the the Shield entrance. They came out on separate sides of the aisle. I thought that was a nice touch. I loved the idea of every time Seth shows up to SmackDown to needle this guy, he always does something to low key get under Roman skin. And I think him coming out in the shield turtleneck again, but <laughs> dressing it up in his way that he dresses now. Loved it. I thought he's coming out with the tape, the tape over his mouth with like the, the rock studio on it. Also really funny stuff. Um, not for nothing. I know people are going to be like, but you're a Seth fan. I think Seth got a lot out of the segment. This is the best I think he's got out of the segments with the other three in a while. I think him him coming out and they came out to Kingdom and even without playing his music when he got in the ring, the crowd immediately started singing his theme song. Mm-hmm. Just shows how popular he is. Even when Rock started to try and shit talk him and they started chanting the diarrhea thing and I was like, well, shut me up because it worked. I thought that <laughs> that was stupid and not funny, but it worked. Uh, too. The thing that Rollins is benefiting is that people are kind of sick of Roman shtick and he's not really switching it up. And then The Rock is going to, in three weeks, we're going to be like, Rock's doing this promo again. Like he's going to keep hammering home this. Yes. So it's going to like be able to build momentum for Cody and Rollins who get to benefit off of them being them, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, I thought he did several things that were funny here as well like when he was just standing there when cody was talking and he didn't even say anything and rock was like shut your mouth and you shut your mouth too before you even say anything he was just looking around like i ain't even saying anything what you so mad at bro um like um and then he had he jumped in the rock face and and was like we accept i thought him yelling at him and immediately calling him mr midlife crisis guy which is ironic because of course the starter of Rollins' entire character is him going through a midlife crisis. Right. Um, so I thought that that was a good tie back to his character, and I thought it was a good one liner. Um, but man, The Rock's retort to that was not for me. Did not hit. And then, of course, Roman following it up by saying, "You're gonna let this guy speak for you. You're gonna let this cross dresser speak for you." I did not think that was funny at all. I I thought that that landed like uh, <laughs> I Why thought that did- that. Landed like a brick flat on the floor. Did not hit at all. I don't. Under, I still don't understand why he did that. It's like who? So it it's it's a tie back to him saying that he wears his wife's clothes in the initial oh, promos. Gotcha. Um, but Makes I just worst. <laughs> yeah. So I I didn't think this was funny Such at all. Such a terrible line. Yeah, I, I thought it was corny. Um, and now I, I but I also I also overall thought the segment worked. Um. I did not expect people to get so upset at people not finding that line funny because then that turned into people trying to go, oh, we're going to cancel Roman now. There's outrage for this. And I'm just like, I, I get this. Some people, some people did legitimately think it's, it was offensive. I can't speak on behalf of the LGBTQ plus community and how they feel about that wording and, you know, their history with that wording. Cause I, I don't know. I don't know how they feel on it. So I can't, I can't say either way if it's offensive or not. I can't say that because it didn't offend me that it wasn't offensive. I I can't, I don't feel comfortable doing that. But for Mm -hmm. me, it wasn't so much that it was, it was offensive. I just didn't think it was funny. I thought it was bad. Mm -hmm. Um, And I felt the same way about the diarrhea Dwayne line as well. I just thought it wasn't funny. Um, funny. And so it's it's fine to just say something's not funny to you. I, and Mm -hmm. I don't understand why some people online got so upset about that, but 
Uh, everybody I, needs to stop trying to do the rock. Let the rock do the rock and everybody else do them. Cause everybody's trying to get on the rocks level and it's not how this works. Like the rocks, the only one that can make these elementary school disses work. And like the, the, the diary of Dwayne thing worked, but it's like, in spite of what's going on, you know what I mean? It's like, I don't, I don't, it's weird. It's weird. It's just it, it, too much. The shenanigans are dumb. I like that. They're like, the main goal of this is they announced that the match is happening. Like we got what we needed to get. It's just like the little extracurriculars are just like a little too much. Yeah. I mean, I think the, I think the diarrhea of Dwayne stuff worked because of the other character stuff that Rollins is doing. Right. And because it, it just shows that his face turn is working. Yeah. Um, but man, it just, some of this stuff, I was just like, I don't really need I don't want this, this. kind of, humor and i i understand that it's like the wwe style of mm -hmm. uh storytelling it's their style of like um baby face promo and I, I get that that's rock's humor and a lot of rock stuff that he does is funny to me but man i don't need roman to do his version of it i don't need uh, no nah. and I, that roman roman just being roman is what's funny but because I, sw I swear it's, i was also sitting there like yo man what's going on with you you might need to might need to change something here, Roman, because uh, you just coming up, pulling up in the in the in the hoodies and the gym shoes, and everybody else in the in the segment is better dressed than you. What's going on? Like Rock, you look, Rock, you're the worst dressed in the ring, and you're the fucking world champ, dude. What's going on here? Rock's pulling up in the Versace joints. Um, come on, man. Rollins, stay giving you the looks, man. Cody's giving you the the politician you know, fresh, bro. You, you know, know Cody's gonna come suited. You're looking bad out here. Yeah, he was standing there in the black hoodie, and he and that bar didn't hit. I felt like, nah, black squad, you you getting a buzzer on this one? No dinger for you, bro. <laughs> DJ D Rec gave you a buzzer, bro. <laughs> like, eh, get out of here, bro. <laughs> you better get some gear, big dog. You better let uh, Paul Heyman take you out somewhere and get you hooked up. I heard that at the end of this, they had a WCW moment where some markets cut out before the Cody Rhodes slapped the Rock. Yeah, so we the the segment went long and surprise <laughs> um it ended with rock trying to do the do this do the knowledge on him, do the science on him, and say man you're a mistake you because aren't 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 your siblings 20 years older than you you're a mistake and then it was like a long weird pause and rock was like nah 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 let him go let him go <laughs> I, I. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then uh <laughs> <laughs> Cody proceeded to slap him and then we got like the times we got like the the ending stamp and it cut to the news I was like oh that's the end of the show <laughs> <laughs> okay and then I, I watched the entire segment on the YouTube channel to see if like I missed something if it got cut and no it that just it. no that was just it it was a very awkward way to end all of that uh, I feel like the segment had its merits I am they of course we're missing the main point of the segment um, was them showing up to accept the challenge yeah. at WrestleMania. They officially accepted the challenge. So the tag match is on. Um, I've been a big proponent of the tag match since the kickoff show. And I think they've done a really, really good job of building it for the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, we got on here and talked about how to pivot was working it could have not worked this could have fell flat on his face but i think they've done a really good job of um building this tag match and getting me interested in both of these teams um uh like just thinking last year i went to my first wrestlemania um going again and i've never seen a rock wrestle at wrestlemania and i was, I was just about to thinking, say phil yo this the rock is wrestling at wrestlemania that's what we got out of this segment like he's gonna yeah, be the wrestling I was just sitting thinking about that last night. I was like, I'm going to WrestleMania and I'm going to watch The Rock wrestle at WrestleMania. I did not think that that would ever be a thing. I thought I was never going to see this guy wrestle. I was done. <laughs> in person at WrestleMania. And the other part about it, seeing the poster go up and seeing them have both teams. And I was like, this is what my guy wanted. Oh, your guy he, too. Yeah, he, 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 he he's He's wanted to be promoted as a part of the main event match and yeah, wanted right. to be be in the spot with Roman and having them eye to eye at the top and having his name up there, up there with Cody. I was like, this is what he wanted. I'm happy for him. Yeah, um, he earned it. And so, you know, I'm sure some people are going to be like, Oh, why does he really need to be in this match? But I think the story they've told with him has been good. I, I, I'm, I'm excited for the match personally. It honestly makes a lot of sense. Cause at one point, uh, months and months ago, I thought that they could get to Rollins and Roman at 
WrestleMania 40. Like it would have been a good story. So I'm glad that they're going to at least at WrestleMania 40 be in a match together. I think the tag match is a good way to kind of play off some things and to lead into the next night. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sucks that it took us. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it they took they us took two, a long way. <laughs> it took us two years to get to the get to them being at, on the WrestleMania card, <laughs> and it is an attack match, and it's because Punk got hurt. So, yeah, it took but a long I, way. <laughs> but I am excited that with that he is getting a spot in the match with them. I do like the story that they're telling with the tag match. I'm excited, man. Um, no, you just fucked me up with that. I'm like, damn. What if CM Punk didn't get hurt? How different would all this be? That's, yeah, that's crazy <laughs> like to think like this wouldn't be a thing we no, uh, like i don't know um this would be so different everything would be so different i mean <laughs> but win-win for me because if we would got the the, the punk rollins match i would have been over the moon um, <laughs> <laughs> win, win. yeah either way you win now i thought that uh they got a if Rock's gonna keep being here, the entrance thing they gotta figure it out because they keep going over. They keep like, yeah, you guys do something. You guys are losing time, losing matches. Like, stop doing this. Yeah, it's yeah, it's a weird problem to have because um, they tried to fix it the first time by having them open the show, and then they took too much mm-hmm. time, and you had to cut people that came after it. And now you try to put it at the end, <laughs> and you know it kind of ran a little bit long. So <laughs> I don't know, man. But you know, at least the segments are good. At least the segments have been entertaining. Uh, it, you know, in spite of the stuff that I did not like about this segment and the segment on Raw, I do think that the build for this match has been good. Yeah. I, I've Post Cody coming out and giving this match to The Rock, like, they, they, I think they've executed and they've listened and they've done a bunch of stuff to build goodwill in the fans and people wanting to see that. So, yeah. I'm glad that they finally got to the tag match and The Rock, again, is going to be on WrestleMania. Pretty wild to think about. Wild. We saw Stone Cold in a WrestleMania main event, and now we're seeing The Rock in a WrestleMania main event. What the hell is going on here? Yeah, uh, <laughs> having having the 40th anniversary of WrestleMania, and The Rock <laughs> is going to be in the main event, and he's in he's in there with the biggest star this era in Roman, and then you're bringing in the guy that's probably going to be the face of the company um, for the next you yeah, know it's pretty, few pretty years. Wild. It's pretty big, and then like having Rollins in there as well, and just having because of. His place in WrestleMania here, history, like heist of the century, like what the shield has meant. I mean, if you look at his resume on WrestleMania matches as well, he's only missed one WrestleMania. Um, a lot of the matches at WrestleMania, the matches hit. So it's uh it's a cool way to cap off 40 years. Big of moment. And me. Yeah. Uh, and, and this could have uh this could have not worked at all. Um I I do not know he what tried. this means. I do not know what this means because um, the stipulation, of course, is that um, if the baby faces win, who I've dubbed the American visionaries, uh, <laughs> if they if they win, then the bloodline cannot be at ringside for the match the next night. Right. But if the bloodline wins, then it's a bloodline rules match, which means it's basically a no DQ match, and you know it's going to be all the interference. So. I feel like they're gonna do that, right? <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I don't know that th- does that make this predictable because I feel like this could go either way. I feel like there's a good chance that uh, American Visionaries can win this match yeah. and we get a straightforward match. I don't think that's gonna happen though. I do think the heels are gonna win here, and I do think that Bloodline is gonna be doing the shenanigans because I don't see us getting a Roman match without shenanigans at this point. WrestleMania 40, they're gonna have the whole gang out there. It's about to be ridiculous. Yeah. But I, I, I do think that also sets up the other baby faces to help Cody win. I think that's where we're going with this. I, and I do think that Rock is going to turn on. Rock. And I'll say, and that's the way to get the Rock bottom, too, because the bloodline is coming. Yeah, but I also do like that story, as I was telling last week, of the Seth and Cody win. And then they say there's no bloodline, but Rock uses his authority to still go down there. So, you know? I mean, yeah, I think it could. That's why I'm saying I think it could go either way, because... Mm-hmm. Uh, even if uh, even if uh, the baby faces win, I think Rock is still going to just do what he wants to do. Right, right, exactly. I thought there was a great moment in the segment, by the way, when Rock tried to shut everything down and go, I'm your boss and I'm your boss. And Roman is standing next to him and he's laughing and there's a pause. And I'm like, yeah, Roman, he's your boss your too, boss though. too, big dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's so. Uh, this is an interesting place to get. To. I'm like, I wonder if they would have went with the set with the Roman and Rock match one on one. How different this all would have been too. 
Yeah. <laughs> I definitely still think we're getting the rock Roman. You think they're going to do that at the at a Saudi show? I can definitely see it happening. I I don't <laughs> want that to happen, but you know, money. So money. it's probably going to happen. And imagine I how much the Saudis are going to offer the rock. <laughs> I mean, if I was them, I would put it off until SummerSlam, make that the big SummerSlam match. Totally. Um, because it's hard for me to just say, all right, we'll just put it off to WrestleMania because we don't know. Time. We don't know if you could keep this going until WrestleMania 41. I wouldn't um, try. Yeah, I don't know. But I think based off of what we have so far, I'm excited. I think the, the gauntlet match for Raw is also exciting because... Um, we don't know who Gunther's match is opponent is going to be for WrestleMania, but mm -hmm. it's Gunther. Gunther's going to put on a great match, um, and I think they've got some good options. I straight away think Gable's probably going to win the gauntlet. Yep. Um, he's you know been putting over how much he wants to rematch. They put out that fire vignette of him talking about how it just means more to him. You, and you know that they're kind of ready to push something when they start making it a tagline and a catchphrase. Yeah. And he's been doing it. You know, it just means more to me. And I feel like that's what it he is. He confronted feel, him on Raw, said he wants yeah. to put the smile on his daughter's face. Like it, it feels like they're setting it up. I'm still holding out a little inkling. I hope for my boy Sam Zayn, but you know, that's just something. I wouldn't be mad at it. I, I think the Sammy, I think Sammy has a good shot at winning too, but mm -hmm. I think that you should give that spot to Gable. Cause I, feel I like, like it would be... somebody getting put over. So I would like Gable in it more, you know, like yeah, Sam, I, I... Sam Zayn's already over. He had an amazing match last WrestleMania. Right. I think it's a better story for Gable um, mm -hmm. based off of the two matches they had before this. I think it makes more sense for Gable to get that spot. It does. Um, I, if it was me for Sammy, I still think you add Sammy to a world heavyweight championship match and make it a triple threat oh. uh, because he's still got, still time. he still got unfinished business with Drew and, you know, I, un unlike the stuff they're doing with the women's match where they could possibly make that a multi, <laughs> multi women match, um, because Drew cheated. I don't think it takes anything away from the elimination chamber win because right. you didn't earn that win anyway, you cheated. And so it'd be different. Because Becky won fair and square. So to then just add somebody to her match, it's just like, well, wait a minute, you lost. Yeah. Um, but Drew cheated. So it's a little bit different. I would be fine with that. I, I think that that's the move to add Sammy to that match. And I would give Sammy the win, to be honest with you. I think Gee. Sammy, I think the story of both Sammy and Cody winning that weekend of WrestleMania and Roman lo finally losing. With Roman. Is a, I think that's a really good moment. It. I don't want to, you know, say that it's Eddie and redacted type moment, but it has a similar mm -hmm. feel to it. It does. Uh, do you feel like the tag the tag match takes any away from the Drew and Seth match? I don't feel like the tag match takes any away from Cody and Roman, but do you feel that in the the heavyweight title match for Rollins? Um, I I maybe I am putting too much on it, but I just mm -hmm. reading Seth's body language in these segments, I think. I think in character, he understands he's going to lose. I think he mm. knows that he's making the sacrifice to do both nights because the bloodline is the biggest threat yeah. to WWE. And so he feels like it's worth it to be in this match to do what's right for the company, even if it costs him his title. Mm. And so you think that Drew's going to go over, though, if they don't add Sammy? Man. I think Drew's winning. Um, I, 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 but like I said, I would add Sammy. And you know, even if you add Sammy, I'm not mad at either of those options of of either Drew or Sammy winning. But I do I like think that. Rollins is I like that that moment you were describing with Cody and uh, Sammy at the end with the belts. Like that shit would be pretty hot. I want it to happen. I mm. really want that to be the move. But I wouldn't be mad at Drew winning either because I you know, and course, Philly too. Oh God, that's hard. I will. I would love it. But yeah, Drew Drew losing, Drew not getting his moment in front of the, the live crowd and the heel run he's on. I wouldn't be mad at him winning either. I think that there's a I think there's a good moment you can get out of that as well. Yeah. It's but, a, I think it's a good good moment for a lot of them. But yeah, Chad Gable I think could get the win. Like this could be a feel good WrestleMania maybe. Yeah, um but but and see the other reason why I can see Sammy getting added to that match and winning is I can see not wanting to give Drew his moment in front of the live crowds like this because he is a heel and he's not going to get cheered. Everything he's done up to this point, you would probably want to give it to somebody that's going to get cheered in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, and you've probably got the punk stuff looming. He's still not signed as well. Um, also, yeah, I keep forgetting about that. So you've got the punk stuff looming and I don't necessarily think you need 
to get to SummerSlam or wherever you do that match at and Drew mm-hmm. be champion. You don't need that to be a title match. Right. Hmm. Yeah, I guess the, with the kind of uncertainty surrounding Drew, it's like, where really do you go with them? Because, I mean, but thinking about it, breaking it down, like if you have Rock, if you have Cody win, Becky win, you know, like all these baby faces win, you're going to have to have one big heel win, right? I think Rhea's winning. I don't think Becky's Oh, winning. you think Rhea's going over? Mm. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense then. Okay, so then Rhea will be the big heel victory. Yeah, and you know, Rhea's at this point now where they're gonna cheer her regardless. Yeah, she's certain kinda, people are gonna yeah, cheer her. So she's pretty she's at that moment that like she's so over it doesn't really matter what shenanigans she does. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I think that there's good stuff that they could do with the setup for this. And I mean mm-hmm. the other part about that that makes this cool, I know people are gonna be disappointed at the women not possibly getting uh the main event, but Man, the idea of Cody coming back and in a span of three years, winning two Royal Rumbles and possibly <laughs> main eventing back to back nights at WrestleMania. Three, three WrestleMania main events is a lot. That's pretty nuts. That's, that's <laughs> crazy. Coming back straight away and having a big match with Rollins at WrestleMania and then main eventing the next night and then main eventing two nights in a row. That's that's wild. Wow. What a trajectory for Cody. I bet like I think he had a vision that he would do all this, but like this quickly and back to back like that is probably like, wow. And you're going to be in a match with The Rock is like, yeah. oh, lots happening. Shout out to Cody. He deserved it. He earned it. Uh, Cu- Busby has a couple of things to chime in on. The reason why that diarrhea line worked is because it was in Texas. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, but I also think it's the WWE crowd. And, you WWE know, they crowd. like they like the chanting. And not just they, they like their chanting. Wrestling fans like the chanting. So I. You know, in retrospect, I'm not surprised that it worked. Um, we've seen wrestling fans chant very dumb things. It's wrestling. There's stuff that doesn't hit for me that I know that a bunch of wrestling fans think are funny. There are a lot of stuff that still didn't hit for Phil and I, but there's a bunch of people that probably hit hard for. Yeah. Uh, Busby also says, also, how come Roman looks like a bum in the ring? Cody, Seth, Roman, and even Paul. Oh, Cody, Seth, Roman. Rollins is probably what he's saying. And even Paul, Jimmy, and Solo look better dressed, and Roman looks like he got out of bed. Yeah, Roman got the gym teacher swag, and he just keep going with it. It's just, that's why I said, man, you got everybody else dressed to the nine. He coming in there with the <laughs> with the hoodie on. I'm like, yo, man, what's going on? <laughs> you're getting money. We know you're getting money over there, big dog. Like, yeah, even with, like, uh, Paul Heyman. Like, you, Paul Heyman's out dressing you. Everybody's out dressing you here. What's going on here? Appreciate you, Busby. Thanks for sending me in those super chats. Those are good money in there. Y'all are cool. Y'all are dope. That's all of our super chats. For, nope. We got one more. Ashley from Mill Chisholm says, WWE needs to get the deal done with Drew. Just do it. I see the Drew and Prunk program. P.S. F them racist fans who try to come at our queen, Bianca. Yeah. Absolutely. I uh, think we've got a few Humper chats. Uh, here we go. We got one from Harley Quinn 93 it says, uh, the Mercedes interview happened right before the anime awards, which was the last, which was just last week. She says in the interview, and she also says she found a home, um, at a wrestling place and implied she'd be returning soon per SRS. She's been on payroll since January. No, no, no. What I'm not saying that she did that interview before she knew she was coming at AEW. I'm saying that she's still treating it like the fans don't know. Exactly. Now, of course, we all can read between the lines and see mm-hmm. that she's probably going to show AEW. But until she shows up in AEW, it's I don't, still a surprise. It's still a mystery. It's still a, it's still a, it's still a mystery, quote unquote. So you can still mm-hmm. treat it like, oh, I can just, I can show up anywhere. Now, I think she could have worded that better. Um, but I also think it's kind of, not that big of a deal. <laughs> she got pretty, uh, some of the parts that I saw, she was pretty emotional in the interview and like not emotional because she's like a crybaby, but like I'm passionate about what I'm saying. And anytime you kind of get into that, like that's kind of how the, the the conversation flows. So I just, it just didn't bother me. Like you're saying, I'm like, I don't really know why people are so freaked out, but you know, you know, how people I think, are. I think reading it and listening to it is different as well. True. Um, because, um, you people have to understand when she said that it was right after she asked um 
<laughs> it was right after, you know, she was answering the question about why she left and mm -hmm. she was getting emotional about, you know, standing up for myself, herself right. and, you know, what this meant to her and all these other things and talking about the injury and how, you know, it was potentially a career ending injury. And so I understood it. Um, boy, one of my takeaways is, man, if we ever really find out what happened in that room and why she really left, um, it's going to be interesting because she... Right. I, I think it's very telling that she got so emotional talking about it. Still. Um, and I think that that's kind of telling with people that just assumed like she just wanted her way and she just left because they wanted to, she, they wanted to book her to do something she didn't want to do. I just don't think it was that simple. Mm -hmm. I think she legitimately felt disrespected. Um, and she basically said that. And so, you know, of course, I don't know specifically what was said or specifically what happened, but I think her reaction to it is very telling. Um, and I mean, just the fact that now looking at it, like the people that were in that room are not there. Vince Laurinaitis are no longer with the company and they're now a part of a lawsuit and have like massive allegations attached to their name. And then, like I said, just seeing her that emotional about it, it's very telling, but it was the same way when Trinity was talking about it. Like I, it just, you can tell like it wasn't just as simple as, um, they didn't want to do the match and they set the belt down and yeah left. it wasn't as simple as that yeah and you know i thought she gave a, a very classy answer about it i thought she was very honest about what they've done for her career and mm -hmm. how happy she was with her time there but also feeling disappointed with how that how that rolled out and you know handling it the best she could and so i think when you then segue to afterwards like it's not done like i have unfinished business there i could end up back there mm -hmm. i it didn't bother me that much because it kind of felt like um you didn't leave on the best of terms and yeah yeah i'm gonna go and you know handle my business and wrestle and and do what i love but there's still a chance where i could end up back there finishing a part of my career there and that like i said that didn't bother me but, i do i do understand what someone was asking earlier they were like brett they connected a few things it's like after yeah. something terrible happens to you this company does something that you hate they're still in the back of all these people mind of like well i'm gonna go back one day. and it's like why would you want to go back it sounds terrible so i do understand it like when I, bret hart yeah. went when bret hart went back i was like why would you but it's like there's something like their fans there's all this stuff legacy there's all this stuff kind of attached to why they would go back yeah i mean because i mean <laughs> I still just think it's absolutely insane that Punk is back there when I really exactly. think about it. Like <laughs> I, I, all of the stuff that he said over the years about WWE and how they treated him on the way out, mm -hmm. fired the guy on his wedding day and all this other stuff, smeared his name, ruined his, uh, essentially ruined his friendship <laughs> with Colt. <laughs> yes. um, like sent him through this lawsuit for years that he had to deal with. And then you just go back and it's like, well, I'm home now. It's like, well, what right. do you mean? Like, uh, it's, it's so it's weird wwe just has this it's, uh, it's a cult it just has this hold over wrestlers and people man it just enamors people in a way that i don't quite understand mm -hmm. and that's why like i said i don't get it but it isn't the end of the world we're not there me. yeah when, if it, and i and i i get for her like she wouldn't be who she is without her running WWE. We know of Mercedes because of WWE. She has a lot of her leg legacy. Yeah. She's my favorite WWE women's wrestler of all time. And like, I understand, like, I understand is where I land with it. Yeah. I, it's just like, I don't for any second believe that Okada might not eventually go back to uh, New Japan at right, the very exactly. end of his career. Because like if he said the same thing in an interview, I wouldn't be like, oh, he shouldn't on AEW. It's like, no, of course. Like, if, like, how wouldn't he ever go back to the place that he built his legacy? Yeah, and it's just kind of the same way with Mercedes. Um, like a big part of her legacy is attached to WWE. Um, now, again, I do think she could have said that better or not said that at all. Because but... that doesn't help with the trolls who are going to be like, she's just waiting to go back to blah, blah, blah. And it's like, shut up. Yeah, I, so I, I, I can see it both ways. I can see the people that are, you know, like if you're a big AEW supporter. You're like, what are you? Why are you saying that? You know what I mean? Like, if you're yeah. down with this, you're like, you what are you talking about? You're coming over here. So, I guess. yeah, so I, I, I can see it both ways. But at the same time, it didn't. I wasn't sitting here like, nah, now I'm mad. I don't want you to come to AEW. <laughs> Just go back to the Fed. Like, leave, here she leave go us with alone. This shit again. <laughs> I knew, I knew she was gonna come in on this diva shit, and it's like, dude, relax. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. Um, let's see, we got uh hamper chat here from Ronan Mike. He says, "Happy graps today, everyone." I noticed fans are starting to finally realize that the rock stick is tired and corny. 
Punk tried to tell everyone back in 2017. If you go back to those promos with Punk and Rock, the comments are all disabled <laughs> on WWE's YouTube channel. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. Punk was cooking that guy. I don't care what nobody say, man. When he told I mean, my man, your your arms is too short to box with God, I was like, nah, he got him up out of here. <laughs> essentially, your homeboy now is just doing what he's just continuing what your homeboy started then. Like Rollins is continuing what Punk started back then. Cause he's saying essentially the same exact thing that Punk was saying. Then like, you're coming in with this bullshit. You're still doing the same things from 15 years ago. You're still like, it's a lot of the same kind of undertones and backstory. I'm like, very interesting. Of course there are things are parallel again. Like there's here, here's a story being told again. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of similarities between Rollins and Punk, man. I think that quite often. Um, so many. Yeah, a lot of similarities. So I I do think it's funny, but you know, um, as much as I love the Rock, I've been a, a Rock fan since I was a kid. But um, some stuff he does is just not they don't all hit. I always they go don't. back. To Shut up, Juice. I was like, Shut up, Juice is Shut one of the juice. corniest lines of all time. And like the Rock Shut said this on TV. Shut up, Juice. Um, Drink some Shut up, Juice. I'm like, that's awful, dude. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think. I think what Rollins should have done when he interjected and told him to shut up for the first time, I think he should have hit him with the the shut up bitch meme. I think that would have been so funny. <laughs> um, but that is the shut up bitch meme is really funny though. Yeah, but it's just the Rock, man. Like the Rock is uh for his flaws, he is still one of the most entertaining wrestlers of all time, right. one of the best talkers ever. Um, mm. the, there's a reason why he can get on IG and do those little selfie promos for 11 minutes, and people are going to sit and watch the entire thing. Not Listen, everybody can do that. Wrestling's all about reps, Phil, and that's what I feel like the IG videos are for. They're reps. Like He's like, mm -hmm. I can't get this off on TV in full, so I'm going to be over here just like getting back in the gym, doing these promos, breaking it down. I, I think it's really interesting that, yeah. you know, when, when the Attitude Era was popular, when The Rock was one of the biggest wrestlers of all time, there wasn't social media to, like, also and go do promos on. You have to wait until next SmackDown to see him again. Now it's like, he might drop a promo randomly that we could see. I think it's really dope. Yeah. All right. Wrestling's in a good place right now. It looks like he's having a, a lot of fun doing this as well. Thank God. So, yeah, and I mean, man, credit to him as well because he's making wrestling hot again. It, the, the amount of people talking about wrestling, when you go on YouTube and you see like him in thumbnails for all of these podcasts that don't talk about wrestling, but they're talking about him. Um, nah, this guy is a needle mover, bro. This guy is him. You got to you gotta give him his credit. Bigger than pro wrestling, one of the biggest yes. celebrities in the entire world. So you'll see him talking about it on sports shows. They're talking about it on the hip hop shows. They're talking about it on the goddamn political shows. I'm like, The Rock is everywhere. This is insane. <laughs> yeah, nah, he's one of the biggest stars in the history of this industry for a reason, man. Um, uh, we got a couple more super chats. Well, Chisholm also says it's still crazy. Punk is back now. He's smiling and taking pictures with NXT talent. I'm like, is this real? Yeah, sometimes I see the still, pictures and I'm like, I think this is this is, this might be AI. <laughs> it's still just I could not have in a thousand <laughs> years predicted that this guy would be back over there. It's just, you know, smiling be, and having a good time, <laughs> trying to be on his best behavior over there, hugging Mike Mazanin. Like, what, what the <laughs> fuck is going on, man? Like, <laughs> like doing he a point. Some very derogatory things about that guy, the Miz, before. <laughs> doing, doing the point picture with, with Triple H after all this time, which was another funny thing that the Bucks did as well. When they shook Okada's hand, they both did the point picture as well. Very funny. Very, very funny. And then Tyrone Kidd says, you saw Paramore gave Bailey permission to use Simmer? I did. Uh, very cool. Uh, Simmer is a Haley Williams um, record off of her solo album, if people don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I think if, if she does get her, doesn't get to main event, I think coming out to a Paramore record or having Paramore play her down to the ring is the second best thing. I yep. think that's a really good moment for her, and I hope it happens. Same here. I hope she gets some kind of big payoff, some kind of big moment, and a big win at the show. Shout out to the homegirl, Bailey, one of the greatest of all time. That's all of our Super Chats. Thank you for everybody for submitting today and being involved. Y'all are cool. Uh, we got one more Humper Chat from Nelson Muntz. Uh, he says, is it safe to say AEW will do it first? Jap Japan show this year and make the NXT Japan project even more difficult for WWE. Now that Okada is in AEW, uh, Big Kazoo oh. is, uh, is about to show up, show the U.S. audience why he's called the moneymaker. Um, 
big Japanese show this year? I don't know if it'll be this year. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it'll be this year, but I would love to see it. I I would love to see AEW in Japan. Um, in the future, yeah, but in 2024, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that seems like a big ask. I don't know, but mm -hmm. I would love to see it. Like WWE is pretty established in 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 Japan, so they can go over there. I don't want to say it's not because AEW is not established, but it's just different. That's yeah. a big market to move into, but it's going to be amazing when it does happen. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. It is the Japanese market is so interesting. I mean, mm. I mean, I guess to go with that, we also got the dope news that Bulacano will be yes. um, getting her Hall of Fame induction this year. Shout out to Bull. Really, really, really happy for her for what mm -hmm. she did for wrestling in Japan and what she did for WWE during that um, era with, uh, Medusa, that match at SummerSlam is still one of the best women's matches in the history of the company to me. Yeah. Still aged very, very well. Um, they were ahead of their time at that period. Like they were just better than the rest of the division. They didn't they didn't have enough wrestlers for Medusa to wrestle. So they right. had to bring like Bull Nakano and they had to bring wrestlers from elsewhere. And their feud just still, you know, I think it's still one of the best things from that era. When I was a young warthog, uh <laughs> The coolest <laughs> Japanese wrestlers in the world were the Great Muda, Jushin Thunder Liger, and this woman named Bull Nakano who looked so cool. She was crazy. I thought she was going to kill Alundra Brothers all the time. One of the first earliest memories I have of Japanese wrestling involved Bull Nakano. So I'm so excited to see her. And knowing the history and all the things that she did and all the clips that we see all the time, well-deserved. Very so much cool. well-deserved. She um, looks great. Former former WWE wwf women's champion um took that belt over to japan defended it in japan yeah legend very much glad that she's getting her moment congrats uh that's all our super chats that's all our humper chats um so it's that time buddy it's that time where we bid you adieu yeah um appreciate everybody showing up appreciate you guys sending us your super chats your humper chats as always uh, appreciate you guys coming and adding to the conversation. It's been Grapsity. I'm Phil Lindsay. Righteous Reg. We are out of here. <laughs>